Noise podcast, where we let you listen to the ambient fan noise of our various offices, three different states and two different countries. We are here to lull you to sleep. Welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter, a Destiny 2 podcast, a show where we discuss tips, tricks and tools to help all Guardians succeed and enjoy playing more. What makes us different? Well, we're not streamers or YouTubers, we just have a passion for Destiny and are dedicated to keeping Guardians informed and up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 news, information and opinions. We encourage your questions and feedback and you can contact us either by email two titans and a hunter at hotmail.com or on Twitter at two titans underscore hunter. Now, on with the show. All right. I guess we should probably get this show on the road so we're not here at 10 o'clock tonight still talking about Destiny. Welcome back to the Destiny Marathon podcast where we talk about Destiny all day, every day. Do you and think we edited to four minutes? What, what, who? We almost got some words there. Other. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> this is, we're de- uh, 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 over each other. Craig doesn't want to record nicely for me. He keeps going down into red. So it's going to be one of them podcasts where I just stay on the outskirts. Craig, buddy, you're going to let, need to let the Brit speak. The Brit speak. He hasn't actually Brexited yet. I mean, he's on he's on the verge, but he's not there yet. No, there's no deal. No deal whatsoever. Well, I mean, of course. We're just going to be that. we're just going to be an island that they push out slowly to sea, and it's just going to drift <laughs> and maybe go into Iceland, and we become Brit Iceland. And <laughs> I think, yeah, that, that France will just build a giant hand so that they can slowly push. Well, I mean. <laughs> They've got those hovercrafts. Just, just I feel like with enough hovercrafts and enough fans, you just can sort of just push the island, you know, a little further away um, out to sea. That's only how that works, what right? What is that? Isn't fracking where they put explosives in the ground to blow the ground apart so they can look for oil? Isn't that what that? I might be wrong, but I'm pretty Something sure that's like what that. that. Is. So all they need to do is frack, is frack all along the border between you and France. Yeah, and there we go. It's a the giant country. sea in the way. But there's no actual border between the, the countries. You know this, don't border. you? Duh. They're gonna they're gonna use the channel against you. They're gonna stream troops over the channel. They're gonna just take <laughs> take little knives and just cut you know just cut around the island and just sort of push it out to sea. What do you That's think right. is under the water? A tectonic plate. What's that tectonic plate attached to? That's right. A Titan. France. <laughs> a Titan. <laughs> it's Titans all the way down. There's a Titan on top of Titan on top of Titan. Oh, I tell okay. you what, though, I was talk. I I, I always talk. Uh, crap about titans and rightfully so talk, talk, but, talk. but this morning when i was playing uh comp, As a toy. i saw something that no i didn't play titan at all the last couple days shut up you keep saying that that's not how the conversation went i said i put on the knucklehead radar and went full-on hunter because you guys said i play hunter like a titan that's how the conversation went shut up um anyway so I saw a warlock with blink and a shotgun, blink shotgunning everyone on the map. I'm like, that is also pretty cancer. <laughs> yeah, like- that's yeah. The, the the warlock who knows how blink works. Which again, there there were about four warlocks I saw in competitive the other day. Mm-hmm. Like the entire four or five hours, they just they don't go there. They, they don't belong there. The ones that were there were clearly had gotten lost somewhere. But yeah, the ones who absolutely know how blink works are vicious. You're just like, I, they're like, yeah, you, you can't hit me. You can't hit me. You can't kill me. I'm going to win. The end. Game over. And they did. It's going to be one of those beautiful days. It's not. It's Get not going to be a nice day. Days. Oh, yeah. So have you actually used the Randy's throwing knife yet, Demon? Yeah. Oh, it's so dirty. I don't like it, though. And I'll tell you why I don't like it. <laughs> Shall I tell you why you don't like it? I'm having to, de- listen, I'm having no, to listen, choose between listen. the Randy's throwing knife and the freaking uh, revoker whenever I go into a map. And it's it's not a listen. decision I enjoy making. No, see, this is where you're playing it wrong. You don't need the revoker. You just need Randy's throwing knife. And you've put the wrong mod on it. You need a counterbalance mod, my friend. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that. But I was also thinking about putting a hip fire mod on there because I found myself in situations where I wouldn't be able to swap to my recluse fast enough. And I've been hip firing with the Randy's throwing knife and it's good, but that reticule is still just a little too big for me when I hip fire. So I was thinking about putting a hip fire mod on there just to make it a little Ooh, better. I have 
an amazing build just for you, just specifically for you. I didn't put it together. Mm. Uh, Nkooch put it together. But I have an amazing build for you later on. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Nkooch, yeah, because I don't, I, I didn't watch any Nkooch videos, so you probably have me. Um. Okay. I'll wait till we cover it in the top. Did you get? Did you get my additional notes? <clears throat> sure did. I did not. You Through did because I emailed you. You say this, that means you just haven't looked. There is additional notes. Yeah. Correct. I haven't yes. looked, therefore I haven't got them. Makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't see, see you join us as usual with two titans and a hundred. <laughs> they, they may be there. They may be within reach. But if I'm if I'm not looking at them, I don't actually have them. That's right. Uh, can't yes, if I got them. My answer was valid. <laughs> You have been crashed. Welcome, Dandy. Hey, man. Welcome to the podcast. You can guess for us this week. We don't mind. Yeah. I mean... Hey. Sorry, Parody, but you're going to have to lead today with this um, annoying connection that I've got. Or this ah, annoying connection. That... I thought you, you were going to say, you have to leave uh, today. I was right. like, I can leave. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll send no well, Dandy, Every first... time he talks, it sounds like he's sticking a fork into a freaking outlet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dandy, most important question: um, what can, what class do you main? Uh, right now, actually, I am maining hunter, but I might switch mm. for a little bit to titan. Just okay, to so, try it out. So, so respawn brought some reinforcements. Okay, I, I just like to know who. Again, I I know warlock players are out there. I've seen them. I feel like I've met them. We can't get any of them on tape though. They're very elusive. They just they <laughs> blink away from you and into the you know mysteries of the. If moon it makes you feel any close. better, I didn't know he was a hunter main. <laughs> yeah, yeah I started off as a warlock main yeah. back in the olden days, and then when ah, yes. uh, Forsaken came out, I switched solely to uh, to Blade Barrage. They were like, "Look, look, we have candy. Come, yeah, come, yeah, come with the candy. Dude, hey, order everything. If I can throw a bunch of exploding knives at a bunch of people and kill them, I won't complain." Mm-hmm. And then until I just kind of until one back. of those knives, just one of those knives, catch catches a random leaf next to what your head. What were we playing and decides yesterday? To detonate. <laughs> what were we playing yesterday, Respawn? I think it was Iron Banner. It was and Iron I threw Banner. My at the super beginning. at two guys, right? And it hit both of them. Pretty big group of knives hit both of them because there was only yeah. two of them, and neither of them died. And that kind of made me mad. But you know what? Uh, I, that happened to me once where the, the knives circled around the guy I was trying to kill and detonated. And the guy was just like shivering there like, oh, my God, am I still alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, there's what some the weird hit detection going on. Yeah. I was I was using loaded questions in my run, in my run through comp. And I would unload it. Onto somebody point blank range. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes it would drop the shield. Sometimes it was like I just blew lightly at them with a you know a, a nice spring breeze and nothing happened. Yeah, it's the the hit detection. It's all is, over the place. Bonkers. Like um, I have the the grenade launcher, the the play of the game with uh, proximity grenades, and I'm trying to get those three grenade kills in one life metal so I can get my mountaintop. Mm -hmm. And on two different occasions, my grenade has hit my intended target and mm -hmm. bounced off and detonated after the fact. I'm like, yep. Proximity mines? What? <laughs> proximity, but not for you. <laughs> right? They're proximity guy, something, but it's he not. He doesn't mines. actually exist. <laughs> so it didn't go off or whatever, but it bounced off of him on two separate occasions. And I was so mad. I rage quit the game for like four hours. I'm just like, this is BS, man. I just the mountaintop is so difficult to get, man. I don't think I'll ever get it. I'll be honest, because I have all the kills and I'm working on the double kills, but those medals, I have three. You gotta, gotta find yourself one of those lobbies. What lobbies? Uh in the last season there were tons of all of LFG was either I'm trying to get a raid done for the twenty nineteen title or come join this mountaintop kill lobby and we'll, you know, trade. But how do you put a kills. lobby together though? I mean, it sounds like a good idea, but how do you put a lobby together when you match make randomly? You can't do custom games, it doesn't count. I don't know. I, I don't join the LFG things for the lobby because I wasn't anywhere close um, to it. Join one and figure it out. Clearly okay. people are doing it. I used to do this in D one just so that we could get different groups together and fight because there was no private match in mm -hmm. Taking King, I think it was. So 
pretty much what you do is you get a group of people together, two groups of people together, and then you join at like about the same time, and then you hope that you get the matchmaking system to work in your favor. So it's Whoa. pretty much all up to chance. So it's RNG that maybe every now and again you might get to fight yeah. each other. So at that I point mean, in time, what, you just find a buddy and you're like, hey, I'll shoot you once, and then you shoot me once, and then I shoot you once, or... Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is that'll work. It's, it's sort of like trying to... We've got two people in the clan, Death Trader Frosty. They're in the same house. So you'd think it wouldn't be that hard to have two groups of people join the same event <laughs> from the same house. You would be wrong. Yeah, we we well, do that all the time in D one, trying to get in, into things. Going all right, you're in the same place. Let's all go. Not you just know, that, going together. You try that with escalation protocol too. They yeah. could not find each other for. I'm like, right? What? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like no, no. I'm sorry. Those that server is full. You can see there's a men's server and a women's server. You have to each be in different yeah. servers. They are separate, but you can't ever actually cross over. Not only are they in the same house, they're literal feet from each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> Destiny's just like, no, you're not. But I am. But you're not. But I am. But you're really not. <laughs> That's he's like, mm-hmm. no, no. I need to say something. All right. So Is I may to be muted out of the show. No, 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 no. Actually, okay. well, I mean, you can do whatever you want. But um, the idea is I might be an a-hole, but I do give credit where it is deserved. And when you guys said that Fuzzco said something nice about me, I didn't believe you. And I didn't listen to the podcast. Right. Did you finally listen to the podcast? Weeks yes. later? I did, and you guys were right, so I do apologize to you guys for trying to tell me and him for actually saying something nice and not believing it. So I'm going to say that, but I'm also going to give a disclaimer saying that that's the only nice thing you're going to hear the rest of this podcast, or at least I'm going to try, right? Okay. Also, those notes I just put in the chat are for you, Dandy, so you can read along when you're not oh. doing the nightfall. All right. I'll look at it in a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chime in whenever you feel the need to chime in. All right. Or just All right. whenever, like somebody else does. That's what Respawn does, so, you know, <laughs> you're good. You're in good company. That's right. So, I guess we should probably start talking about things. So, are we doing the additional notes last, during, or before the other notes? Well, there's some information from that I've put in between, so... All right. Whenever, whenever you hear the the night even try to chime in, that's when we'll know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you. Oh, I got another little section for me. I guess I'll start it off. Okay, fine. Um. So, uh, this week, ten seventeen twenty nineteen, the bungee twab. There is a tease. The exotic quest for Leviathan's Breath will also go live for all season pass owners. Uh, rumor has it that Banshee knows something about where to start. And that's all. Uh, next is the bungee bounty, uh, which is over, and you can skip it because it happened two days. It happened yesterday as we record this, so it happened. It was on PS4. It was with the big show. You missed it. Um, Sorry, PS4 enough. people, if you missed it already. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I was looking at the date. I'm, I was looking at the date. I'm going. Wait a minute. That that was yesterday. It was. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Here's here's my. <laughs> Okay, now, so no, well, before you before you go before you go off on your your little rant, we what? have um the de- we have we have some details about the Leviathan Breath, uh, okay. which I thought you'd be excited about. But parody's going to take excited. you through no, I, them I, just I, in case I, I, can, I can do it. I can do it. No, right, and because no, otherwise the it. whole podcast is going to be you talking. And the problem is what. Don't want to lose anybody listening. No, oh, they love him. They all love him. They're they're just like we want respawn right. more. He's such a I've such been a, I, such I've a been balanced and off the island voice in the community. Parody. Go ahead, man. Well, thank you for joining two things and two hundreds this week. Already in progress. So we have some Leviathans of Breath quest steps which Night Demon had gone out into the wilds hunter-like and uh, compiled for us. So Banshee does know where to start, so he's going to give you a weapon stored in his workshop, but he didn't specify how to get it. You have to locate the hidden entrance to Banshee's workshop to find the weapon. Hint, Banshee said Cade knew where the secret entrance was. If it were up to me, I'd say start looking over in the hangars where Cade spent all his time. 
says the ghost. Hmm. You think it's already? I was thinking initially that it was. Yeah, somebody's already found it. Um, I I thought it was going to be like through the ramen shop. You know, Mm. when Kate Kate spent a lot of time at the ramen shop and we got the ramen tickets, and now we have an empty ramen shop. I thought it was going to be through there somewhere. Still still the ramen tickets and tiny pasta's raisins and celery. Anyway, step two is where are the keys, sir? You found a bow in the display case in a room that's got to be Banshee's workshop. Problem is the case is locked. Return to Banshee to complain politely, of course. Step three is intro to safe cracking 101. You need a rotating key code to access the bow in Banshee's workshop, but the original has been lost. You'll have to generate a new code following the steps that the Banshee did. First on Banshee's list is to get out into the field to seed a key generator with combat data. Seed data in the new key code by completing Gambit matches or Vanguard strikes. Gambit Prime matches and Nightfall strikes grant the most efficient progress. Step four is advanced safe cracking 201. The key generator is seeded with variable combat data and can now output key codes, but to constrain the possible set of generated codes, Ghost says you'll need to provide the generator with some more targeted data. Literally, use a bow to land precision final blows against Vex or Cabal. Step five is the economics of war. The key generator will just need a little more data when you're ready to return to Banshee for the final authentication. And for this one, you are going to need to complete a reprised version of the arms dealer strike in the European dead zone on Earth. Now we're going to apply the crypto security, which is um, go see Banshee in the tower. And uh, yeah, now you have the steps to get that done and get your lovely bow. And Jarv has a video that will link in the show notes of how to glitch into Banshee's workshop because, of course, someone has and, of course, someone's already found it. Yep, and there you go. Hey, look, Iron Banner tips. Doesn't matter. It's going to be over by the time this comes out. Uh... And now we're going to take you to Respawn's favorite section. That I have titled Respawn's Titan and Warlock Nerf Gloating. <laughs> so, Respawn, take it away. <laughs> okay. So, change is going live on October 29th. Here's what the Destiny Dev team has to say. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, trample and everlasting flames are too powerful especially in pvp they were tweaked before but it wasn't enough so they're doing another pass to bring them back to earth they've increased the cost of the light attack and this is on the titan uh flying knee that he likes to do while in his super they've increased the cost of light attack to make cross-country travel less forgiving it's still possible to run people down and but this should make it harder to run across the map and still wreak havoc that sounds like bad english striker code of the juggernaut the bottom path the one that everybody in pvp uses with the freaking one-eyed mask here we go trample and gambit and nightfalls and basically everything. anywhere where there's ads so uh trample tuned the amount of super energy returned per kill reduce the amount returned possible per kill from 15 percent to 13 percent before diminishing returns gets applied and it has also reduced the low end of diminishing returns from five percent to 3.25 percent so you're not going to get as much super back whenever you get a kill as you do now now i don't know how much two percent is in the long run but i hope it's meaningful um, it has changed the kills for the diminishing returns by splitting them out between players and combatants. Oh, that's why this makes a difference. <laughs> Previously, it was 15 kills. Now it's 14 combatant kills or seven player kills. Players count for two times towards diminishing returns. <laughs> That just doesn't it just warm your heart to hear that, uh, my two Titan brethren? I mean, don't you just feel so nice about it? About how you can't just spam the whole map three or four times, killing the entire team nine times? Feels well, no, because because honestly, you you haven't even gotten to the worst part of it yet. I I know I know I'm getting there. I just I'm 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 relishing the moment because it's just <laughs> don't don't rush me through this. All right, this is this is the good feeling for me. Um. The cost of light attack in super has increased by 50% from 2% to 3%. And health regeneration on kill no longer procs when you're in your super, so you're no longer invincible. 
<laughs> yeah, so you can now be. <laughs> so I, I will let now that we've let respawn revel in this moment. This is a much needed change. Yes, it is. This again, PVE fine. It's wonderful. It's broken. I love it. I won't say that I didn't use it in comp. This past week, did up to my recluse. It was abs- It's it's been broken for a long time. So I'm glad they're finally giving this the attention it deserves. But yeah, it's it's still a beautiful thing to be it able is. to run through and murder entire teams, invading gamut and then invading gamut again. And go, hi guys, I'm back. Right. And I'll tell you one thing: when I was playing on my my Titan to get her leveled up to 950, I never used the the arc. I just used the void. Because I could just get the super back so fast with the void. Oh, the void is yeah. I mean, the void is so good. I've I arc main a titan all through basically all through D one and a lot of D two until they gave us the uh, the, the third the, the th- yeah well not even, well really not the bubble but even just the third subclass in Forsaken mm-hmm. with the big shield that uh, you know the golden gun didn't shoot through until recently. Whoops. Um, because <laughs> honestly, strapping detonators to people's chests is just way too much fun. It is very, very fun. And um, remember how they said that the Nova Bomb can just instantaneously delete the bubble and kill everyone inside? We mm-hmm. were playing Iron Banner, and some guy popped a bubble when I was playing on my Warlock, right? So um, some guy popped a bubble, and his whole little team's on the inside. And keep in mind, mm-hmm. I didn't. I know you think you know where this is going, but it's not. I didn't hit a bubble, right? Some th- These are the guys on my team that popped the bubble over the waypoint. They're thinking, oh, yeah, well, we're going to get this. And out of just <laughs> literal left field, out of the left corner of my screen, this warlock comes, pops a Nova Bomb, and kills all of my team except me because I just watched <laughs> this whole thing occur. It's like, yep, saw that coming. <laughs> he just capped it. I didn't even try to fight him. I'm just like, did you, you earned it. <laughs> yeah. You just murdered everyone. Yeah. Oh, I, I've had so much fun in Iron Banner. People either not knowing what the bubble does or not understanding how the bubble works and going, I'm going to run in there. I'm like, no, no, sir. Yeah. You've, and, and, and I wasn't even running Helmus A14. Like, you've run in. I'm going to throw two grenades down. I'm going to throw the half wall down. You're going to burn out before you get to me. If you, you do are. get to me, I'm just going to punch <laughs> you in the face. I mean, that's you that's are. all it is. And what's even better is if is if you have the two grenades that stick to people and you toss it at the floor at the bottom of the bubble. When they walk through, the grenade sticks to them. So even mm-hmm. if they shotgun ape you, they're still going to die. Yeah, they're, they're, they're done. <laughs> like you're not making it out of this bubble if you come in, dude. It's just a bad idea all around. And that is interesting. Um, uh, so, yeah. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Poor poor warlock friends, unless my demon can speak to us. Hold on, I just I want to know what he thinks because you said how you feel. What does what does demon think if he's not going all robot on us? Okay, yeah, he's going robot on us. Moving on. (laughs) What what about you, uh, Dandy? Do you have any opinions, negative or positive, since you are now a temporary hunter main? Uh, not really, honestly. I mean, I mean, I've already always had the problem with striker, or not strikers, titans just being alive. Titans <laughs> Pretty much titan. existing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Titan being titans. Mm-hmm. But I mean, also, that's kind of what titans are for, I guess, in a way. So, I mean, it's never, I mean, it bothers me, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's not like... If they wouldn't have changed it, I probably wouldn't have said anything. You know what I mean? Unless unless they kept buffing it or something and pretty much everyone just went to Titan. Because I kind of think that they've been nerfing Hunter for so long. Especially their exotics with oh yeah, nerfing Shards of Galanor and stuff like that. And, 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 I think, and in our fancy Void Boots. Yeah, all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Anything that pretty much gives you your super back fast enough. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of... I. Th- think i don't know i mean i probably am wrong completely but i don't think a lot of people play hunters anymore like new care or new player or not new players that have been paying attention and everything so they kind of just went especially like personally i kind of went to titan but i never actually got there yeah i mean, I mean it, it, to be fair are... you, if you're still playing hunter it's just because you love the class you know or because you love kid oh, yeah. or both right and that's why i do it it's just it's the idea of the class you know it's the idea of being the assassin but i mean in the beginning whenever this was first happening i was i was 
advocate an advocate against it. I don't know how long you've been listening to the podcast, but in the beginning, I was totally against it. I said Titans are supposed to be tanky, not one shot hitters. And um, these two were like, no, that, you know, the whole point of a tank is, you know, it's tanky and it can blow things up with this big front cannon. So <clears throat> then I was like, well, if the Titan exists, there's no point in playing any other class. And they're like, yeah, exactly. So you, yeah. it sounds like you, you're kind of on their side, you know, you, you, I mean, you yeah, I'm kind of Titans just do, but that's not what they just do. Cause in D one, they didn't have this yeah. one shot ability, you know? Well, they still had. Wait, wait, wait what do you mean? They didn't have this one one shot ability in D one. Not for everything, though. Not not oh, yeah, not, not the way it is it. now. You know. Well, well right. Well, that well, kind of bothers me. But well, it, well in D one we had the good bubble that you could you could tune to your delight. I miss. Uh, I'm, I'm glad the bubble's back, but I miss the good bubble that I can really set up to do exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. Like drop orbs when people shoot at it. And that's all I want my bubble to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just drop me eight orbs. That is all. Yeah. I don't a... care if a void bomb will destroy it. I don't care. Well, I mean, I might care if I don't get the armor of light, but just give me the orbs, man. Yeah, we're, we're just yeah. here for the orbs. Yeah. So Night Demon would, would like you to know that he doesn't really use the bottom tree, but the middle tree with the insurmountable skull fort in PvE and top tree in PvP or void. And now I let the public know. Okay. Uh, I still don't use what is uh, the top the tree, king. when you get when you kill somebody, you instantly get your melee back, right? Is that what that is? What does the top tree do with the skull fort? Uh, I mean, with the skull fort, you're you're getting top tr- top tree a shoulder charge, ah. yeah, top tree a shoulder charge and two grenades. Uh, okay. Inherently yeah. inherent to the class, and, so and the skull the fort, you can do? just middle tree is the de- is the death from above thunder crash. Ah, uh, and, and again, and skull fort, you know, if you get a kill. You get your your melee back over and over and over, so you can just continue to eat people from the sky. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. You All call right. that the that, that's the panoramics eighteen loadout. This you just eat people from the sky and then you die. So, uh, similar nerf, uh, but this time we're looking at our warlock brothers. All right, so dawn bladed tomb of flame bottom path, the everlasting flame super. It is tuned the amount of super energy return per kill handled differently than striker as this attack is an aoe um it has increased the low end of the diminishing returns from 0.75 percent to 0.95 percent in addition it has changed the kills for the diminishing returns by splitting them out between players and combatants once again previously it was 30 kills (laughs) i did not know that that's insane 30 kills wow now it's 21 combatant kills or seven player kills uh players count three times towards diminishing returns um i approve i do approve because i've been killed by the flaming sword more than my share of times yeah the things that are really again when i'm when i'm being murdered from the sky i don't know what subclass they're, they're using on it mm-hmm. but it's yeah it, it's been in a really good spot so it's, it's sort of good to see them raining both of those back in especially with the i mean you talk about the speed of the striker titan the speed of those of those warlocks going from map you know one end of the map to the other especially in pvp it's like you get murdered on on one side you spawn well, on the other because, side and that's there he is we again we have a jump i'm sorry they have a jump where instead of going directional up it goes directional forward right and, and yeah. when you're in that super it's like it gives you the rocket boots it's like when he's yeah. there on top of you again it's like oh and he can murder you from again halfway across the map from the skies yeah. you know it's like a sniper also, roaming in is, the air is that the one that also does tracking so doesn't that make it worse, or is tracking the other tree? I don't, I don't really yeah. remember. Yeah, it, again, it, we'll, either we'll way, we'll find a warlock bad. to tell us. But yeah, no, it's it's deadly. <laughs> what, what subclass was? It almost doesn't matter. Ever, uh, everlasting flames. Yeah, the That's, one where if you kill people with your sword, you get some super back. That does have tracking. It does have tracking. Okay, yeah, so, it's not yeah. like super hard tracking, but it's still tracking. Yeah. Right. It's it's. Uh, I'm going to move in at least the direction of the thing I'm trying to kill. Mm-hmm. So we'll yeah. tracking on the if throwing it's like, it's like a shotgun. If you just shoot in the general direction, it's going to hit, you know. It's kind of like I describe it like Black Talon. How it I mean it has tracking, but it's not Yeah, but Black Talon is aggressive. Kill people behind. You ever used it like in Gambit? It'll it'll track I have. It's to, to Ellen back. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it it yeah it, it's probably similar to, to the tracking like the Titan throwing hammers where they'll sort of track you but not yeah, if, super aggressively. They'll, 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 they'll sort of they'll sort of tilt you know turn a little bit but they're not going to chase you around a corner they're, they're not the nova yeah, bomb or the death bringer tracking 
Um, so now yeah. we're moving on. I'm going to need you to break this one down for me because I'm not quite sure what it means. Uh, Sentinel, Code of the Predator, the Top Path, Ward of Dawn. Armor of Light Timer now correlates with the life of the Ward of Dawn. What? So it's, it's probably it's, it's going to give you some sort of timer, you know, that coordinates with, with how long your bubble lasts, which goes to the second part, which I'm really happy they're making the change. Your particle yep. effects move more rapidly toward the end of the Ward of Dawn's life. So when your bubble is about to end, the little things will go, and then your bubble goes away. Because right now, if you pop the bubble, and it's up for, I don't know, some amount of time, and then it just disappears. And you're like, oh, God, the bubble's gone. Run. Run for your life. So it'll be nice to have some sort of visual indicator that this is going to disappear. Uh, okay, okay. So hold on. When you're in the bubble, you get the armor of light. And that timer you see on the armor of light is how long you have left on the bubble. Is that what they're saying? Maybe. Yes. Not sure, honestly. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what exactly, you know, the cor the correlation is between the life and maybe they're just going to give it to you for the entire duration of the bubble if you're in it. I don't know. I mean, I know when you're in it, you get it for the entire duration anyway, but yeah, I'm not sure what exactly that means. Uh, the next thing we have for quality of life and bug fixes is we're getting a buff to our nerf <laughs> for the Night Stalker Hunters. Uh, Way of the Wrath, Middle Path, uh, Shattering Strike. The bug has been fixed in which shattering strike activation window was, was reduced to three seconds along with the true sight. Shattering strike now lasts the proper nine seconds. So, yeah, it's, yeah they fixed yeah, that. was the thing that. we talked about a couple of weeks ago where they're like, we, 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 we wanted to nerf this thing, but that other thing was tied to it. So we've nerfed both the things. We'll fix them later. Now they're fixing it. And this all happens at the end of the month in, in the 2.6.1 patch, So which is later for the end of end of October, the 29th, I think they said. So these will all be live come November. <clears throat> so this next section, this is why I was saying I'll wait till we get to it. Um, parody, our lovely, lovely parody, pointed out whenever I was complaining about the one-two punch being taken from hunters and given back to the Titans, or not back, but given to the Titans in the form of Peregrine Greaves and one-two punch. Uh, Parody in his infinite wisdom told me that if hunters don't appreciate the gifts that Bungie gives them, then Bungie will give it to the Titans. In saying that, <laughs> you should know, we have removed a bug that allowed players to shoot immediately before activating shoulder charge, which allowed players to apply the one-two punch damage buff to the shoulder charge or the Peregrine Greaves. So, which we got from the hunters, thank you, hunters. Yes, because the bug was caused by, by the quality of change made for Tempest Strike. Yes, but I'm not quite done yet. Something that you don't have here that I just wanted to point out is you know, the artifact, and you know, the artifact has this nifty little arc thing that if you hit somebody with an arc, punch, thunder coil, yeah, that's the one. So now that we have that, you put that on your armor as a night hunter. I'm sorry, as, as a hunter, not a night hunter. Bleh. Um, top tree uh, arc strider. And what this does is it gives you almost as much damage as you could do pre-nerf. I think I think it differs by like eight percent, eight or twenty percent. I have to go back and look at I it again. I do have a video by us across that goes over it for you later. Well, there you go. But the point is, is Bungie has taken it away from the Titans who did not appreciate or deserve it and given it back to the Hunters. I'm Thank you! Sure, I'm not sure and what... Good night. You know that works on all the arc stuff, right? Yeah, but you can't do the one-two punch with your little Peregrine Greaves one-shot crap anymore. Uh, I don't need to. I just need to do the one punch. Mm -hmm. It's called the Shoulder Charge of Death. Yeah. I, 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 I have two two pairs of Peregrine Greaves and I've put zero of them on. I've never used them yet mm -hmm. in, in D2. Because you just don't need to. But can you still do four hundred thousand damage to a to a boss? Don't need to. Yeah, but that's what the prospector's for. Just sit back, hang out with the prospector, <laughs> and then everything dies. But the the point is, is they took it away from you and gave it back to us. Because now, if you have the the amazing one punch, it's still not going to out DPS our one two punch combo. Because you only get the one with hunters cool. and the liars handshake. We get all of them. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know it's absolutely better if you're doing sustained damage. Yes. Now, what I love is the fact that he's missed off the bottom part, which I thought he'd zone in on. I'm not there said, yet. You yeah. did. You I said, end of, that's it. You said. No, no, no. Then, I said in saying that, I didn't finish. He's getting oh, there. Okay. Yeah. 
He's he's enjoying this 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 okay. slow, I'm this slow loving. He's he, he's romancing these notes this week. Exactly. He's getting really in there and getting all the marrow <laughs> out of those bones. <laughs> it's a long time coming. It's a, it's it's Titans are getting genuine nerfs, and I'm enjoying it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And honestly, that 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 uh, Hunter Arc Strider class is in a good spot right now. It really is. It is That's brutal. I mean, if you're tired of of Striker Titans running around. Put that thing on. I don't know what tree these two hunters can tell you, Top but tree. I've been killed. Oh uh, yeah, so I've been killed out of the fist of havoc, or even just one v one. Like I activate the fist of havoc, they activate the arc strider, and I'm dead by the time I can even hit the ground to move again. Mm-hmm. So that arc strider super is in a good spot. It's very. And good. I assume this will make it better with the, you know, the the true sight shattering strike thing the, they fixed. The only thing that it's missing out on, and I'm not going to complain about it. But it just would have been a cherry on top. Is if you activate your super, and I hit you with the with the the liar's handshake proc, it will leave you with like three or four health, but it won't kill you. <laughs> so hmm. it's like, damn it, it's so close, so no, close. They, that's something they patched, wasn't it, a couple mm. of months back? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving on. So, um, I have uh, a complete unrelated question, but it kind of just reminded me of this because. What? I've been maining Arc Strider, uh-huh. and in the last night I was playing, and it was late, and I was sitting here, and I got a random exotic drop, right? And I was like, "Oh yeah, okay. cool." I was playing Blind Well, I think, and then I was playing something else, and then I got another exotic drop, just like World Drop. So did they increase the? Chances? They did not. No, you're have just you, getting have, lucky. Ha- have you not played in a while? Like, have you been away from the game for like a week or two? Uh, not really. Okay. I mean, I didn't play for a few days, but I mean, yeah, I, I used to never get exotics. Like, the only way I was getting exotics was Zer. Yeah, and then, then, then you, cl- the you clearly week me as well. Yeah, you you, you clearly come in, yeah. come into come into random RNG exotic week. Cause yeah, it seems like like when you're like I know when Nineteen was off for like a couple weeks, he would only play like an hour here and there for like a month or something. And he came back and he's like, I got this exotic and this one and this one and this one. So I think there, there seems to be some some sort of at least it feels like like a catch up mechanic. Like, hey, there's got to be. Well, welcome back. Thing happened to Here's me. some candy. Yeah. When so I play, when it, I played Monster Hunter being... for all that time and I came back, I was getting Buku exotics, too. So there has to be something. What yeah. Something yeah. About. Yeah. And, and it may just be. Yeah. You've you've hit the you've hit the RNG lottery of going, oh, yeah, here's three or four exotics. I've gotten some where I'll just be playing Gambit. And it's like, oh, here's some exotics. Oh, here's another exotic. It's like, mm-hmm. we'll just. You know, eventually, eventually your RNG runs out, and the only thing you can get are exotics now. It's like, okay, I've gotten sixty-seven blue weapons. Here's an exotic for you. Thank you. Game. Somebody called it um, uh, returning player incentives, but mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds good. Hey, if you come back, you have a small window where you get a bunch of exotics. But at the same time, if that's the case, it encourages you to leave Destiny for a long for a prolonged period of time. It's like, hey, if I don't play for three or four weeks, I'll come back and get a bunch of exotics. You know, so I don't know how true it is. This is just what this individual was talking about but if that is true i don't know it sounds kind of like a double-edged sword but uh moving on um <clears throat> uh this bug going back to the shoulder charge one two punch was caused by a quality of life change made for the tempest strike before shadow keep if players had the sprint button configured as a hold to sprint then they would need to be holding the sprint button while sliding in order to activate tempest strike now, with the release of Shadowkeep, we added a small window of time where players could activate Tempest Strike after letting go of the Sprint button. This change had unexpected effects on other melee abilities. So, we have reverted this change until we can find a better fix for Tempest Strike. We are also aware of feedback about other abilities and gear not mentioned above. We have our eye on One-Eyed Mask expect a change in a future update and we discussed this and the reason i'm disappointed about that and why i didn't just zone in on it is because they said future update it's not now might not be the next patch might not be the next few patches it's just yeah. eventually but you so. remember a couple of months back they said we've got our eye on it we'll mm-hmm. be tuning it in a future update yeah nothing has happened exactly and again they're saying the same statement exactly. i think what they're doing is slowly tuning the titans and seeing what the outcome is with the one-eyed mask of a gone robot. A little bit, yeah. But I get what you're trying to say, right? Um, and I agree. They they are, they're, they're tuning the Titan to, before they tune the one-eyed mask. But at the same time, even if they tune the hell out of the Titan, the one-eyed mask is still going to be awesome. Even if, even if the Titan doesn't use any abilities, 
even if the Titan used no abilities, One-Eyed Mask is still overpowered. They get wall hacks. They get overshield. They get healing. All of that from the same exotic. You know? That's the only exotic in the game that has all of those things. You know? Mm -hmm. Knucklehead Radar. I, I can't even see through walls. I always have my radar up. Yeah, but I can't see through walls. The What's the Hunter exotic that does give us wall hacks for like three seconds? I can't remember what it's called. But we, we, we have an exotic that... Whenever we tag somebody, we can see where they are for like three or five seconds, but then it goes Isn't away. That flow tracer. Yes, that's it. But again, with the flow tracer, do we heal when I kill you? No. Do it's I get extra armor? Good. No. Do I get extra I mean, healed? No. I don't get is. any extra anything. I get a wall hack for a few seconds, and that's it. And if you're low enough, I get an execute damage, but you already have to be low for that. So <clears throat> it's just even even if a titan doesn't use any abilities, the exotic itself is just too damn strong, man. So I get what you're saying about they're going to tune the Titans to see where it sits, but even if they tune the Titan out of all of their abilities, it's still an overpowered exotic. Right, but yeah, his point is they're trying to see how much. I think I think they're trying to do less of the let's change, you know, let's change the subclass, let's change the exotic, let's change this and this and this and this and this. So then you either have a stupidly over, you know, overpowered because because they can make some change to the Titan that makes the one I mask even more powerful. That's and true. how it and how it plays in the sandbox, you know. Yeah, their intention is to, is to reel it back. But they can make it even worse for everyone with some of the changes. So I think you know, I, I like that they're doing a slower, you know. You know just it, 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 it's just, Why don't they just change the perk? Because it's got too many advantages to it, right? So just take away like the healing, or take away the wall hack, or take away the overshield, take away one of the things that it can do and leave the rest, you know? Because I mean that's what they did to the warlocks and that's what they did to the Titan Barricade shield, right? It no longer just auto reloads. It just makes you reload faster. So they completely changed its ability. So why don't they just do something like that exotics, with the right mask? Because most of our exotics are absolute garbage. But I, th I think the thing that you're kind of missing is for the average yeah. player, it's not a god tier weapon. It's not a god tier <clears throat> armor piece. I mean, I was talking to Panoramics 18 this week, and for him, it's just an exotic armor piece that he can put on that will help give him a slight advantage in his gameplay. Now, if you're a top tier player, you are going to crush other people no matter what exotic you've got on. Mm -hmm. Yes, the one I'd mask is going to make you even more exploiting all the benefits of it but us for us normal players we'll take down one person or maybe we might get the overshield but somebody will still shoot us from behind and kill us whereas a top tier player might be able to avoid that and look you know and observe and and get away with it and carry on with the killing whereas average players see it as a good exotic i think that's the problem is that the top tier players make these exotics too good and then they get really nerfed and then us average players go you know what? I don't even want to use it. I mean, I was but using it because it was giving me a it, slight advantage. Yeah, but it turns the average player into Batman, and it turns pro players into Batman, born on Krypton, brought to Earth when his parents were killed. You know, <laughs> it's just... pretty good analysis, actually. Right? Yeah. So I mean, well, 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 well I mean, that's I mean, anything in the anything that's decent in the game, it's gonna make the good players insanely good. I don't yeah, care what it is. It, it's going to make I think it makes you know, good players, players even better. Good players. You know, you say it gives average players a slight I mean, advantage. That's more than a slight advantage. In yes, my opinion. I mean, no, it is just a slight advantage. Let, let it, me tell it, you, it just in, only give you a slight advantage. Right. In, 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 in things like competitive, in, in things where there are fewer players on it, like competitive, you know, survival, it's an absolute advantage. And yeah, it absolutely will make a, a decent player a really good player mm -hmm. and a really good player absolutely god tier. No question. But if you're playing sixes, if you're playing a six v six, yeah, it'll give you an advantage. You might you might win that one encounter, that one one v one, or maybe even a two v one if you're if you're sneaky about it. But you're not going to roll over a map just with that one exotic, unless you're a god tier player with that many people on the map. Because again, when you kill somebody you, that hurts you, don't you heal and get the overshield? You do, but but even then, if there's yeah, you've killed one person, but if two or more people descend on you, you're still dead. It gives you a boost, but it's not going to absolutely, you know, reset you for that next encounter. Correct. Okay, so if you get jumped, I could see that. But you are a dueling god when you have the one-eyed mask on, and it's procced. Yeah, but but how many times in six v six are you really going to have a one one v one one v one one v one one v one duel? I mean, you've seen those scores I posted in the band chat, right? 
you make but, your own one v ones. Like I, but would, I think that's because right. you're, you're a different player to us. But you're you're, you're also getting forty five kills in a match. A lot of normal folks are not getting forty five kills in a match. One eye mask or not. You you know I mean honestly all three of us are not you know by any means top tier PvP players not even close. Apparently Demon is getting everything that I want to get before I get it. Well no no that's <laughs> just the top tier RNG. Is <laughs> he well, that, that's a top tier RNG player and yeah it's just time but we've put in more hours into the Crucible than a lot of other folks. Just just playing the game has given us that experience of we play we just play it a lot more than some people do who step into it maybe every Iron Banner maybe here and there. It's it again. I mean, you're not wrong. It is a great exotic. It's about the only thing worth using if you're in PvP right now. Because there's yeah, just, I, still, I mean, I still think they should take away at least one of the things that it can do. Because having three exotic perks on, on, or, on a freaking exotic is or buff your foe tracer to be very similar. That would be fine too. Yeah, I had this right. exactly. Yeah, I had this yeah, conversation yeah, bring, with somebody else. Buff yeah, the foe tracer up. and then give the, the, the freaking warlock something that can do something similar. Well, the warlocks have got the wall hack um, chess piece if they put a rift down, haven't they? So maybe give them something very similar as well. Wait, what? Run that by me again? If you wear, there's a, I think it's Sanguine Alchemy. If you put down a rift, anybody that stands in the rift from your team can see through the walls, see where the enemies are. Can they really? That's a oh thing. God, you like, don't know. To start playing I, I didn't know that. I, I believe it's the Sanguine, but I can't 100% remember. I'm saying that now. One second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it gives you heightened senses. The, the You get an enhanced radar and it marks enemies. There you go. Yeah, when you wear the, the Sanguine Alchemy. Yeah, I, I didn't know either because, again, I, I never play a Warlock. I never play anything anymore, but my Titan. Right it's one of those. Crucible too. Okay, so yes. it gives you heightened senses. You get no. enhanced radar like the Hunters do. And it marks high priority targets for you and your allies. What does high priority mean? Well, it means all Guardians. All Guardians get marked. If oh, they're do close. they really? If they're close. And then, yeah, you can see so the walls. It, I, think, I believe it was one eight. of those things that was used what? initially for trials when was trials was in year one. I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean that sounds absolutely vicious. And pair that, pair that with an arc buddy or something, and you've got wall hacks. You've got additional firepower. Yeah, that's vicious. Yeah, no, I'd be okay with those changes if we had those changes. That that would balance out, I think the. The thing, so either either nerf that or buff buff the other two classes so they can do something. I think that's comparable. that's a, a better thing is make the other exotics that are very similar something that they can use to counter the one eyed mask. Right. Imagine if you get a rift down and you're the warlock and you've got two other team members that run into it at the same time, you get an extra damage buff and you can see somebody <laughs> coming from around that, a corner. That one eyed titan with bottom tree striker coming at you. <laughs> yeah, but you, you're gonna get you know. Yeah, You're going to go one on one with them. That's right, or three v one. And the same with the foe tracer as well. If you buff the foe tracer in a certain way, yeah. I mean, with the foe tracer, just make the wall hacks a little more permanent, I guess, instead of the three seconds. Make it the same length of time that the one eyed mask can do. And I don't know. It it would have to have another perk on top of that to compare it with the one eyed mask. Maybe you you can see them through walls for six seconds every time you use a dodge you know something like that just i don't freaking know whatever point is you know some something needed to be done whether it's a nerf of that or buff to something else and yeah is that i'm the on end of that? both sides of the spectrum on here because i see what parody and night demon are saying how it i mean it helps new players <laughs> but then it also makes the good good players untouchable in a way mm-hmm but also, it's it's like overpowered enough to be overpowered, but then you know, underpowered enough to get away with it. In my and opinion. they they can disable things like we've seen yesterday with the uh, with the Telesto, right? So we know that they can just straight up disable items. So my thought was this: if you don't want to nerf the one-eyed mask, and if all of these things you guys are saying are true, then at the very least, in competitive, disable it. Then there's no reason to step into competitive. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, w at what point? If you have to have <laughs> that one exotic 
that I don't one have to. exotic. I don't have to, but so it makes me a better play player. Competitive. Yeah. Yeah, it would make a Hunter a great player. It would make a Warlock a great player, but neither one of those two classes have it, and they still go into competitive. I'm not saying I'm a great player. As a Titan, Titan, if you don't have the one-eyed mask, you don't go into competitive? That kind of proves my point right there. I mean, I I I went into competitive with the armamentarium. Two grenades. I was quite happy with that. But but we were were doing it to get our supers back. you know. Yeah, And, and, and honestly, that's half my run. I started with armamentarium and then switch to the one i mask because i kept running into players you know other folks using it i'm going well if you're going to use it i'm going to use it i'm not going to you know give myself yeah. a disability going in here i i kept running into into teams of three titans all running one eye masks and everything else i'm going that well if you can do it so can i and i started and going we- with armamentarium and yeah it's just it's it's it's, it's at a point where it's just you know it's like what budgie talks about is you've got one choice for a weapon i mean i'm sorry you've got one choice for an exotic Mm-hmm. And that's sort of the only choice right now. Yeah, and, say and this. That's but the point that I'm making. Though. Later yeah, on, yeah. I do have a video by Mtash that will point out a few other things for the Titans once the one-eyed mask goes away. Which one is it? I think I've seen it. Good, because we, we we need some other alternatives. Because I mean, there's yes. stuff that, that again is situationally very good, but in if you're playing in something competitive, it's just it it doesn't give you anything that's I don't know going to give you enough of a boost to be super useful. Yeah, but if you play a no. Titan, like like you guys say that I, I I play every class like I play a Titan, well, whenever I jump in there, I either use an armor material like he's doing or, and I've said this multiple times, the freaking uh, Peacekeepers, right? You mm-hmm. have you have the Huckleberry as your primary because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now that I have the freaking Recluse, I would have the Recluse as my secondary, but if you don't have the Recluse, you know, there's a lot of really good legendary submachine guns out there you can choose from. You know, the Mita Mini tool, for example, is what I used before I had the Recluse, and it worked phenomenal, right? So you run in there, and you have infinite ammo on submachine guns at close range that are just going to destroy the enemies unless they have a shotgun. Right. <laughs> and unless so, they take you out with a, sn- with a scout rifle. Yeah, it, I mean, I was running, yeah, between Armamentarium, and I pulled the Actium War Rig out because I can finally, with Armor uh, 2.0, yes. give it perks for an auto rifle. Yeah, and some of the new auto rifles I've been having a lot of fun with. Oh yeah, and I'll pull some of the old favorites out of the vault too, and just run run dual auto rifles, and you can just shoot for days. You don't even need to reload. Don't have to think about it. You say that, and I've seen many, may, may many. May not be your titans. best PvP choice, but it's a lot of fun. No, that's what I'm getting at. I've seen many many titans in competitive, competitive, not just Iron Banner, competitive, using that with the sweet business and the blue perfect, the assault rifle you get from level thirty, and mm-hmm. they are just eating people, man. It's like, what are you going to do? You're going to turn a corner when he's already fully spun up? No, you're going to die. You're going to get flinched and you're going to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. that's, a, that's a thing now, dude. You're, yeah, you're yeah, saying it's completely yeah, you know, I, I've been running around with I've been running around with the uh, the arc logic, which I, I'm sort of feeling like is a better misfit. It's a slower. I think I think it's a 600 rate of fire. So it's not quite as fast as the misfit, mm-hmm. but it's actually useful and you can hit things with it. It's I, I've been running around with that. It's just a lot of fun. I mean. And I've been throwing anti-barrier mods into everything just for good measure. I don't know if they, they do any good outside of Vex Offensive and things like that, but it makes me feel good just to have them there at least. Yeah. But no, that that is that is definitely a very viable build. You know, so you don't have to have the one-eyed mask, but the fact that it is right. as OP as it is is a problem, you know? Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, so anyway, if you haven't used the Blue Perfect, uh yeah. I got a crap roll on mine. My roll is terrible, right? But other people are getting better rolls on it. Yeah, and if you have I need that to re-roll like, mine. With like rangefinder or mulligan or rangefinder, and uh, with the bottom half of your magazine does more damage, stuff like that, and you have that armamentarium on, dude. <laughs> it's just, come on, it's slow firing, high impact. It's, it's crazy, man. So I love getting Titan advice from a hunter. I'm just mm-hmm. saying what I've seen. Uh, and the I'm, saying what I've seen. I'm saying what I've been killed by, weapons. and I'm saying what, Say what, what you've has been, been doing working. sneakily as a Titan. No, no, no. With, I told you with a Titan, I was using the two grenades or the. Oh yes, you were leveling your characters up. That's what you. And I as. haven't touched her since she got to 950. Then it's the warlock, and now I'm touching only my hunter, and, unless something changes. So mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Punk. Yeah. Yeah, I've got all auto loading holster and dynamic sway reduction on my blue perfect. It's like why? Can can I, can, can, you, can I just give you these these rolls back and just you keep those? <laughs> right. 
I don't even know what I have on mine. But um, your section is next, if you didn't notice that parody. It is. I, I sure did, because really this entire show is just 2.6.1 updates. Right? That's all so, you, buddy. Everybody I loves you. I wouldn't like to even roll the music, because it's now for time for Parody's patch note preview. And we actually have a patch note to preview for you this week. Woohoo! So again, as we've been talking for the last hour or so, patch 2.6.1 is scheduled to be released on October 29th, 2019. So this is going to first give us a forsaken subclasses will now correctly show the proper super icon and the PVP HUD for everything for forsaken thunder crash, burning mall, blade barrage, spectral blades, Nova bomb. I'm sorry, Nova warp, well of radiance and chaos reach. Apparently they were showing the wrong icons. Okay. Uh, I didn't this, notice that. Yeah, I didn't either. This is now this is one of my favorites. <laughs> Fixed a bug where warlocks who wagered weak modes and reckoning were incorrectly being awarded titan gear <laughs> so if you've been you playing, playing a titan? no i'm playing a warlock if, if you've been playing titan? no one play reckoning warlock, but you want to play a titan i really don't here's titan armor what the here's, hell here's some titan armor for your warlock so if your warlock was very confused in reckoning you were right it's a bug uh, they've also incre- fixed a bug which increased loading times for gear previews while in space flight players they should did not fix it. they didn't do it they didn't do it they I haven't yet, but it's, it's they're, coming they're up. Oh. They're, they're, they're going to say they fixed it. Again, end of the month. <laughs> Players should notice their character models update more quickly while changing gear, previewing ornaments, or previewing shaders during spaceflight. Wow. They've also taken our Phantasmal Core stack from 3 to 999. Thank you, Bungie. Appreciate it. Uh, people on Steam, you're getting blocking communication with players on Steam will now block and mute players in Destiny 2. They've added the functionality for slash add friend slash remove friend commands. You can now add or remove a friend with the player's name. Uh, players must be in one of your rosters, fire team, friend, or clan in order to add or remove them as a friend. They've added functionality to the invite command. Uh, who, who cares? I mean, good, I guess. I don't know. Steam players, I assume this will be good for you. Players can now invite or join other players regardless of their Steam online status, online, invisible, or offline. And the slash help command has been updated to reflect these new changes. And that's really, you know, it, except for everything we've been talking about for the last hour. Now we're on to the fully operational art station. That I can't describe any of the pictures to you because my mic or the my connection keeps cutting out. So go and look at the 12 and look at all the lovely pictures they have. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, we have an art show, but I just can't show you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it... we're a podcast. I can't describe every picture. Yeah. Even though he try. will try. Yeah, Look, I was going to say my I connection is say, bad. We did, we did try a couple weeks back, and you know we decided not to try it again. So yeah, see what you guys yeah. don't realize is me and Parody are DDoSing Demon so that he can't give you all the details that he wants to give you. We have learned from our past mistakes, and for that you can thank us because this is how we make our own quality of life changes. So he doesn't talk about needless details that we don't need to hear. Like that's, me. Why I, that's why I gave you anything with numbers in it. I mean, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> even I love how even like your title, Armor 2.0, you've spelled out 2.0. <laughs> so there's not even numbers there, man. That's how Bungie put it. I just copied and pasted it, but that's okay. Oh, well, see, I was trying to give you credit, man. Now, now it's gone. I am not Bungie. I do not deserve the credit. That's correct. But shall we get into our Armor 2.0 talk? I guess so. Go ahead. One of the new systems they rolled out in Shadowkeep, the Armor 2.0 system. Sure. They've been monitoring feedback about the system, and today they wanted to tell us, you know, a little thing, talk to us a little bit about sort of why they did what they did, why they they set up the the affiliations with the not the affiliation, whatever the word is, with the Arc Void and Solar builds that made respawn so so very happy a couple weeks back. <laughs> affinities. <laughs> affinities. There's the word. Yeah. So yeah. So the affinities. So basically, they wanted to give you sort of, you know, when they're looking to build Armor 2.0, I was about to say Armor 3.0, but that's coming in the future in Respawn's mm-hmm. world. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot more to it than this, but here's some of the more notable points is one, they wanted to give players the freedom to experiment with builds while also requiring players to make creative choices when putting those builds together. So here, do some things, but we don't want to give you, let you do all the things. And there's sort of a reason behind that a little later on. And Hold on. Um, you said yours rolled with dynamic sway and auto loading holster. I sure did quite a while ago. Apparently, that is the curated role for that gun. 
I'm I'm just looking how to how to re-roll it because apparently when you hit 73, well, 83, and 93, you can start to get it from drops. Uh, I'm not but... I'm not sure who create who curated it, but they did a very poor job. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, hey, I got the curated roll and it sucks. It's I'm been sorry, curated by a blind monkey in the corner. I'm I'm sorry, whoever whoever curated. It. I'm sure you're a lovely human being, but you should not curate all rifles. <laughs> Armor 2.0. First thing, you know, freedom to experiment with builds. Number two, give players the ability to balance mods above and beyond pure effectiveness. So basically, when mods had no restrictions to their use, as was the case prior to 2.0, each mod was evaluated on the strength and usefulness or access in the case of consumables. Some mods cost more, some mods cost less. You had to go find them in different places. So giving mods the energy type allowed us to limit the choice of combinations within a single armor piece, which actually made it easier for them to sort of predict what builds people would build for and also give them ability to balance the game and also break the game with things like uh, the artifact mods to break those restrictions. So this means that, you know, perks and mods that break the rules can be compelling choices without having them be significantly stronger and more appealing. So you can't absolutely build like game breaking characters, at least, you know, not completely game breaking, right? But it gives you a little more choice, just a little more variety, but also it gave them some sort of sandbox to play in and say, okay, here's sort of the limitations we're setting to you. We can, you know, we can say, okay, within these limitations, build out the you know stupidest, most powerful grenade heavy mod you can, or you know, grenade build you can, but there's a limit. They can sort of say, okay, here's here's the limit of what you can do in the sandbox, just to give them a, a little bit of ability to balance it out. Sure. Which is good for everybody. And then the third thing was just relieving the information overload pressure on the mod UI. So they said in early in early play tests, when you could look at all the mods for all the pieces, it just filled your screen with mods. Which, when you're looking for that one mod and you don't remember what the picture is or it was new and you're trying to figure out which one it is, it's just way too much visual information, which paired with... Then some you of don't the, deserve to use that mod. With some of, some of the slow loading on some of the consoles and things, it was just a lot of visual information to look at. So they said, you know, it's a huge amount of information overload. It made it hard to quickly find and change mods you were seeking. So just cutting down the number of choices made it just easier to process. Yeah. Speaking of which, let me ask you guys a quick question, especially the hunter that's in our party, but even the two titans. From the Iron Banner, have you gotten a void class item? I have yes. absolutely no idea. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if they could even drop because I've spent over a thousand Iron Banner tokens and I have never gotten anything besides an arc class item from uh, Saladin. So I was just curious if you hmm. could even get the other two elements. I'm going to tell you a secret. I haven't even been looking. Because uh, I, the only reason I bring it up is because I need, because of the mod I'm using on my Hunter to do something, I don't want to say because I don't want Bungie to nerf it, so kiss my butt. Uh, I need a Void class item. That's the only thing that it will come on is a Void class item, and I cannot get one from the Iron Banner. So I have all Iron Banner gear and then just a random Void cloak, and it's frustrating. Anyway. Keep trying. Your RNG day will come. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just curious why we were yeah. on the topic. Yeah, and, and honestly, I've gotten a bunch of all the gear, and I just mostly have broken it all down. If it wasn't a high enough light level or high enough anything else, because I'm not even looking at the infinities right now. If it comes rolled with like four or five mod slots, I keep that one, especially if it's a high light level. Yeah, but like... like just as a friendly thing, you need to keep at least one of each. Even if it's a crap roll, make sure you no, have one of each because no, you you're going to no. find that when you need to do certain activities mm -hmm. or certain builds, you have to have a class atom of that element to use what you're trying mm -hmm. to use, like what you're talking about right now. And it kind of sucks when you don't yeah. have it. Then my fashion game will suffer. Yeah, but not just your fashion game. If you just happen to have deleted all of your void class items just because they didn't drop high enough and you didn't pay attention, well, it's not just your your looks that are going to suffer you can't build the build you want to build because you physically don't have the class item that you need or the chest piece that you need or the helmet that you need or whatever 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 so mm -hmm. you're not yeah. wrong yeah so they also talk about a little bit when it comes to deciding which weapons were associated with which affinity which again respawn talked about in great loving detail a couple weeks back there were three main criteria they used used to choose where to put them so first was ammo type each weapon, each energy type needed to have a good mix of primary, special, and power weapon ammos. Or power, yeah, power ammo weapons. 
their their reading their words of my reading is just combining to make a really great show this week. So basically, yeah, you need to have primary, special, and power weapons for everything. Range. Each energy type need to have a good mix of short, middle, and long-range weapons. And thematics. Each energy type should have weapons that were similar thematically when possible and feel like the kinds of weapons that match each other's mechanics and were associated with an energy type. But I know Respawn was talking about a couple weeks ago, You could like it makes... And I don't remember which exactly thing, like hand, hand cannons and shotguns, maybe something like that. It was harder to, yeah, you know, like exactly. to build those builds. So you could do, you could do certain things. And I was listening to the Massive Breakdown podcast, and they were saying, you know, it makes certain builds almost impo- you know, impossible to do. I mean, you can still do those builds, but you can't enhance them the way you could before. But they said, you know, there's some other builds, and again, I can't remember the exact descriptions of wh- you know which ones they could and which ones you could. Yeah. But they said, you know, there are now things you can put together and pair that you couldn't before. So it's taken some away, and it's given you some. So if you have a play style that you can't do anymore as well, you'll be sad. If you have a play style that you couldn't do before, now you can, you'll be happy. But that was sort of their thinking into, into why they match things the way they did. Mm-hmm. Tis sad face, my friend. Tis super duper sad face. Indeed. And and they have heard the feedback around suggesting, you know, instead of locking the mods into an energy affinity, they should just, you know, discount the cost of the mod. But again, they said this led to the UI overload issue. So it seems like a lot of these choices were were driven with just how much information is presented to you on the screen. And I almost wonder if that's also related to the rendering time for that information presented to you on the screen. It's a lot to choose from. And I wonder if it was slowing things down as well, but that's just my guess. No, I'm not going to get into it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and again, that's, that's totally a console issue. I know the PC things load super quick and super sna- snappy. If you're on a PC, that's powerful enough. Indeed. Just, just a guess in my world. Um, and they also said they are they are adding ammo finder and scavenger mod to the broad category weapons, which will be automatically unlocked for all players when they're ready. The ammo capacity mods are also coming in the same way, but they won't be ready until even later, sometime in the distant future, in the in the mists of the past and the future with the the vex showing up. Um, another big change is loosening the restriction of stacking on Armor 2.0. So basically, starting next season, you'll be able to have multiple mods of the same type in a single piece of armor, with a few exceptions. So you can run your two hand cannon loaders, your two shotgun ammo finder mods, etc. The only stacking that they're going to prevent is things that won't give you any benefit anyway, such as tra- you know fastball and traction. And the reason they limited this initially was they didn't want to com- completely break the game. Built a brand new system, wanted to put some blinders on it so it didn't just completely break the game from day one. Because they knew enough other stuff would break the game, they didn't want this to contribute to it. So you know these weren't quite ready for. I'm sorry. And then your armor mods, they wanted to add them to collections with Shadowkeep launched. They weren't quite ready, but in 2.6.1, you, you'll be able to pull them out of collections as well. So that's a lot. <laughs> Will that take the mods from previous years too? Uh, I do not know. Fair enough. Yeah, it says, I mean, it does say armor mods will be visible in the collections, allowing you to browse through all the possibilities and see which ones you've already collected. And also starting next season, you'll the mods also get a UI upgrade, which will show you the armor energy type, the cost of it, and you know, just like just like in your armor. So I yeah, I don't know if it'll if it'll show you things from the past or just what you have now in armor 2.0 land. I don't know. I kinda have a feeling they won't have the previous thing if they didn't say anything about it. So I will go into it, assuming. Yeah. Aim for disappointment, and then if it's not, then you can be pleased. Exactly. And I've talked way too much, so somebody else should talk now. I thought I was talking. Apparently, my mic is muted. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. You don't no, no, it's, it's like been very fo- quiet. <laughs> you don't feel like you're on board with the whole uh, changing the cost of mods so that you can use them anywhere thing. Like, I mean, I'd be on board. I'd be on board with it, but Bungie's not on board with it. Okay, because I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but the way you read it, you're kind of like, eh. And I'm just like, what's wrong with that? I like it. If if you can get it on. Did he just disconnect mid sentence? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> My demon, was that you? No, I haven't done anything. <laughs> okay, all I heard is, Doo-doo! and then it got quiet. Did did he leave his power charger at work this week again, and then his laptop battery died? I think anyway, he, he probably thinks he's talking because he hasn't come back very quickly. There Why did you remove me? We didn't. 
I didn't. Night Demon claim he hasn't. Dandy might I didn't have. Touch, didn't I? I didn't touch anything. I physically cannot. Lies. You're all liars. I yeah. hate you all. No, no. I, if I had removed you, I absolutely would tell you that I kicked you out. <laughs> but no, I, I I, didn't this time. You were just, yeah, you left mid-sentence, and I was like, I don't even have Discord up. And I was like, was that him? <laughs> I guess it was me. I thought it was me. Nah, Demon kicked me. He just doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> yeah. Why would I kick you? Why you know, not? Listening, I'm listening to you. Yeah, and he can't talk this week. We've got to fill the airwaves with something. The people need their three hours of show. I mean, it's got to it's, come from somewhere. Oh my god! So, I can so, do this though. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I won't respond to him until he comes See, back. Now he did it again. That was no, the, I was watching time. it. <laughs> I did that one. Yeah. So well, anyway, to respond to you, it was sort of just part of it was my own information overload. Just like the UI, they didn't want to overload. I've overloaded my brain with too many changes and too many things coming. I'm, I'm just happy that they rolled things out. They said, okay, here's a taste of what's to come. We're going to make it better, and we're going to give you the things you've asked for, but not all at once. You have to eat your dinner before you get your dessert. We're going to improve on these things. It's just going to take some time. So, no, I'm happy about the changes and stuff. Honestly, most of the mod stuff I haven't really gotten into, and I know Night Demon yells at me every week because he puts together... <laughs> these you know gargantuan list it goes didn't you watch that video no it's honestly, like we I, have a podcast right <laughs> yeah I, 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 and honestly no i haven't had time to watch the videos i haven't had time to make out builds if no, people no, want to write their builds down in text form so i can read them and put them together <laughs> that would take me a lot less time than watching your 25 minute video which again i understand the again that's your thing that's your career i understand it i love it i dig it honestly the last two builds i looked at were the ones that paul tassi wrote about because they were text and i could just read them and then I could see what they were doing. It took me like or, two minutes and not 15. Or minutes. to give a shout out to somebody that recently gave us a shout out. Cheese Forever, when you look at his videos, he gives you the meat and potatoes immediately. There's no fluff. Yeah. There's no yep. intro. There's no outro. He just gives you what you're there to see. And that's it. Exactly. It's just there. It's beautiful. It's everything you want. And a, a nice tiny little bow. And here's how to do it. Here's how to break it. And life moves on. Speaking about bows, we have Fashion Week. So apparently it's Fashion Week in Destiny again. And as they showed you, the Levanto Prize, this is a new emblem that will be giving out on the fashion-focused Guardians. So if you think you've got an eye for style, you've got to submit your best address Guardian on the Bundy.net or reply to their Fashion Week tweet. Um, and then you'll be in with a chance to win the new emblem. All right, that was actually a pretty good transition. It was. It was. And and if you miss it this this time around, it looks like they're going to do it about every month or so. They're going to put out the same thing. So if your fashion game isn't quite on point yet, like Night Demon's very powerful but very ugly Titan, <laughs> you will have time to up your fashion game so you can maybe win that Levante prize in the future. And and they did say they will show off some of the best the best dressed guardians in the twelve next week. So I look forward to seeing that because I enjoy a good fashion game. Mine is mine isn't quite there yet. How I'm do you feel about it. that emblem though? Do you think the emblem that they're offering is worth it? I mean, I, I kind of figure any any emblem that they're sort of offering for doing a thing is worth it. The artist emblem is cool. This emblem is cool. Like, I, it's not my favorite. I'm still not going to take my uh, laser tag emblem off because <laughs> it's the one true emblem. But I like I like the, I like that there's little things you know, little in the game rewards you can get for saying, "Hey, I did a thing that Bungie acknowledged." That's not totally like you know, I I raid I raided day one and one. I did this just. Little things, you know, the artist thing and the Fashion Week thing, I think are just cool little things to have in the game because not a ton of people are going to have those. So you can sort of have have something special and something cool that, you know, some tiny portion of the community actually has. Yeah. And speaking of the laser tag bug, we have some bug fixes this week. So apparently they've deployed right, a hot fix. just pushing your luck, buddy? Okay. 2.6.0.4 to players on all platforms. And this hot fix has resolved several issues. These are servitors spawning in the GoFan and Forge, which could result in the game crashing. They fixed an issue where Nightmare Hunt Time Trials Master Triumph would not progress correctly. They fixed an issue where Nightfall The Ordeal would not drop powerful rewards for players who have already completed the Vanguard Strike Challenge. And they've also fixed an issue that provoked a temporary deactivation of rally banners in the tire game on the Sanctuary v Vendor Space on the Moon. And they've brought back four character clan names instead of two. So that's where we were thinking we, we'd done something to our clan, but we hadn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, it almost made me wish that our clan, instead of Frozen, just was some other name that began with F.U. 
<laughs> like fun times galore. I don't know. Something that, you know, just would have F you as our clan tag. It's like, hey, can, can we? Maybe that's what happened to some of the clans. Can we start a petition? Why they yeah. Converted that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there were a number of clans where, where Foo was their, uh, their tag. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Anyway. Yeah. There's also been PC migration issues. Um, the gist of this is if you've had problems migrating, try migrating again. If this doesn't work, reach out to Bungie. You know, there, there's a whole bunch of things about if you use the wrong the wrong Steam account or the wrong Battle.net account, things didn't go as planned. So if you're migrating, make sure you know what you're migrating to. That's all. That's really what they're trying to say. And they are collecting information where it's not a help forum, but if you'd like to just provide your feedback or your information on your what problems you've run into and whatever, they have a forum available for that. So you can leave that information. Sorry, PC folks. We're not getting into, into the in-depth details of how you struggle to play the game because we're on console and don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm not struggling. <laughs> I'm having quite a nice time on PC, as a matter of fact. Thank you very much. Well, aren't you a fancy man? I am a super duper fancy man, but not quite as fancy as Dandy over here. I am pretty fancy. He's not going to lie. Fancy. So are, are you submitting your best fashion week build? Are you Are you a fancy fashion guardian or just a fancy man overall? I'm um, a killer. Do you have a build to win that sweet <laughs> emblem? <laughs> Narcissism. I might. Again. You should let them know. You should win that emblem and then lord it over us and say, see, I, I'm the fashionable list of all the guardians. I probably will. The fashionable list of all the guardians? Is mm-hmm. that the word? You, the fashionalist. Fashion, fashionable list. Fashionable list. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. If the word doesn't exist, just make the word up. That's how that's how language works, right? Um, <laughs> words come from somewhere. And speaking of words coming from somewhere, <laughs> we are going to the community managers of Bungie, who have spread some more words of truth and knowledge from their Twitters, their Reddits, and their forum posts. So we're not going to talk about the known issues that really most of them have been resolved and we've talked about, but uh, the Telesto is disabled in the game. I know we mentioned it briefly. The Telesto is disabled in the entire game because there was a bug. If you remember way back in, <laughs> when they brought Telesto out in the blind well, it basically counted each bolt as a person. So you could just clear the blind well by shooting your Telesto on the ground, letting the bolts explode, and it would count as a kill progressing that. So that bug is back. So if you had enhanced ashes to assets, you could then shoot your, your four-rounded Telesto on the ground, throw a grenade on top of it. It would count in PvP as getting like four Guardian kills, fill your entire super up in about five seconds. You could just super your way throughout the entire map. So they've turned the Telesto off completely while they fix that bug. So if you can't use your Telesto, that's why. And if you ran into issues with the Iron Banner, scour the rest quest step this week, which was it's the tech said to land super final blows it showed the grenade launcher icon, but they actually wanted SMG kills. If you didn't read, you know, social media to figure out what was going on with that, Bungie has auto-completed that quest step. So if you got stuck there, they've they've progressed it for you. You probably won't know that from this show until Iron Banner's over, but at least for the next one, <laughs> they'll have it sorted. I, I really did feel sorry for a lot of people that didn't seem to know that quest step was bugged. And right. anybody that oh, killed so me many. over and over and over again with mm-hmm. grenade launchers in Iron Banner this week, I messaged them after the match and went, that's bugged. <laughs> Just use an SMG. I got so many thank yous back saying I've been doing this forever. Oh, like, good guy. Good guy. Night team and helping people in game. You, 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 my friend have, have gone above out to and me beyond. Via a grenade launcher. He's definitely British dad. Information. He's <laughs> definitely British dad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just want you to have a good time with things. Yeah. And then there was that one guy working on his mountaintop quest going, I know, bro, but that's really funny. <laughs> that's so funny. Anyway. Because the mountaintop isn't glitched. What are you talking about? Or bugged? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now we can get to our Destiny Community Manager Roundup because the rest of these bugs we've talked about before, but those were the two I wanted to mention. Because again, if you're running around going, why did my Telesto break? And I wish I, I should go see if I can find this. There was some guy on Reddit who was like, so I had my Telesto equipped when they made the change and it bugged his game so badly that every like every single weapon he put on had the skin of the Telesto, but in the shape of the weapon it was. So we had Telesto hand cannons, Telesto Yotuns, Telesto <laughs> rocket 
like like it, it's like it it just broke it broke the skin of everything. Dude, he's super broke. Aid. What? Yeah, yeah. Like I guess he like he had it equipped when they took it out of the game, which yeah, I guess he, he needs to sell know, that account. Freak, he needs to he needs to put that online somewhere, game. saying um uh, <laughs> well, hack the destiny account. Gives, right. You know, one shot kills to anyone in the crucible. Yeah. No, <laughs> it was so. Well, so it, yeah, it was so funny because he was in the he was in the tribute hall. You know, shooting all these things, making the sound of whatever gun it was, but it looked like a Telesto. But, but you know, again, the skin was the shape of that weapon, so it was just really weird looking. And yeah. I now sort of want like Telesto themed weapons because there was one that he had that sort of looked like the Vex Mythic class, just had those weird sharp edges on it. Anyway, I should see if I can find that. But it was, it was, it was so funny. So yeah, when when Buddy takes the thing out of the game and you have that thing on, it can break your game pretty hilariously badly. <laughs> Uh, this this player's account is uh is is you know what I'm surprised that they didn't like ban his account for cheating. It's like, but but well, you no, no, did no, this to no, me. No, <laughs> no, 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 that's it. Well, I mean, it's not cheating because because he was using the actual weapon. Like it was the actual weapon he was using. It just looked like the Telesto. So at one yeah. point, you know, I, I heard I heard him fire the Yotun because we all know what the Yotun sounds like, of course. But it looked, you know, it looked it was like a Yotun skin Telesto or a Telesto skin Yotun. <laughs> Yeah, all, all his weapons worked as as they should have. They just the 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 picture was completely hilariously broken. <laughs> I'm assuming like when he, when he you know quit out of the game, and went back in, it fixed itself. But anyway, just just hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. When he was forced volunteered off, something like that. Mm-hmm. that they were like, uh, hysterical. We're gonna we're gonna kick you to orbit. There you go. I'll put that in the des- in the uh, Discord for you to look at later. Okay. So the, nice. the night you want to get in the show notes. Yeah. There we go. So did Nike want to talk about our, our roundup of, of uh, Destiny Community Manager news this week? I will not. try. I will try without the voice glitching out. Mm. So DMG regarding Eververse. So apparently regarding Eververse being broken, this, there is a lot of to unpack here, but I'll be speaking to the team with rotations, timed exclusives, bright dust versus silver, all the good stuff. Cosmo and I have synced with the team and we'll make sure to talk through a lot of the content in this post. Uh, doesn't mean that we'll have to an immediate change uh, or an answer in the future twabs or a full breakdown, but they can promise you that they are listening and they'll be making sure that the team is aware of any thoughts here. And regarding Festival of the Lost thumbnails, those aren't right at all. All good examples of how um, it's a good example of how data miners can bring up false information and they'll have the Festival of Lost preview uh, coming in the next few weeks and they'll show off what sets are available. And that's a, a big post on Reddit that we can link. Cosmo said some stuff auto-generated when it's... Uh, yeah, some stuff is auto-generated when it's not actually visible yet and still waiting an additional content to be finished in future updates. I don't know what that's about. Same. Is that part of the same thing, do you think? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was... Yeah, basically, that's the same thing about going back to the, you know, some people f- found some of the Festival of the Lost Armor and said, oh, this is just reskin escalation protocol or whatever. And he's saying, oh, okay. You know, you know, they had to put something in the game, you know, so, you know, they auto generated, you know, e- you know, something Festival of the Lost there. skinned EP armor just so there was an asset in the game, but it's not oh, okay. what it's going to look like. So, yeah, yeah. And the whole post is all related to the things we've talked about. The things in, in Eververse not being able to, to be bought with Bright Dust, them not rotating through, sort of it being a thing you have to buy only. So it, it's a whole, you know, the whole huge post about basically just Eververse is not useful unless you want to spend real money in, at it. Fair enough. So they've had feedback that Zer's fated engram should be guaranteed as an armor piece that has been passed along to the team. Also with that, Cosmo this week has said Zer is in the same state where he's supposed to have random rolls from last season. And you remember that bug that we had that it wasn't giving us random rolls. Well, at the moment they know that he's bugged again and he just seems to be offering the same, I think it's affinities from the armor that's in your collection and the same stat roll. So you'll look at what you've got in your collections um, and you may have a 48 or a 50 level item. And it's the same kind of thing that he's offering. So he should be offering higher rolled stats and different affinities in the future. It's a bug. They'll let us know when they fix that. They've had feedback about uh, Javelin and Midtown um, that can be found here. I, I don't know what that's about. Is there the feedback and, about Javelin and Midtown that's upsetting people? Uh, basically, 
the it was a whole thing about that I linked a little, little further down. Where okay. you know, it, did, did you play the first couple of days of Iron Banner and it looked like you saw the same maps a lot? I did, I did because they tweeted out that they were going to give us those three maps over and over again until Thursday, and then they said they'll add more into the rotation on Thursday so that we can get used to those new maps. Mm-hmm. I believe that's what they were telling us. It, it sure was, yeah. So a lot of people, and sort of me too, thought the rotation was completely broken because I was seeing the uh, same map over. You know, Even of the three, I was seeing the same one map over and over, like six or seven games in a row. So it was nice of them to clarify. It would have been nice of them to tell us up front that, hey, we're going to feature these new maps yeah. like, they, like they didn't do when um, they brought Gambit Prime out with the new maps and didn't tell us they were just going to have us on those maps too. So Bungie, again, good communication, but go go all the way. Good initiative, bad judgment. You're and trying. they've also had feedback that resetting max ranks should give pinnacle weapons. And that's been passed along to the team. I don't know what pinnacle weapons that you want from resetting your max rank. You know, do you want just a free recluse for maxing out your rank? I guess you do. Just just hand out the red ricks. It's everybody has one in there. No, no, no. I think by pinnacle weapons they mean pinnacle drops. Oh well, right? like a powerful reward. Yeah, I think that's because okay. yeah. Yeah, because that's what's been happening to me. I've reset. I'm so ashamed to say this. In the past three days, I've reset my freaking uh, Valor glory. Yes, four freaking times. Infamy. <laughs> mm. No, infamy's there. next week. Infamy's next week. Uh, mm-hmm. No, no, the, so. the the Valor reset it four times in the last three days, and I feel absolutely ashamed. So you've been playing a little bit of Crucible, is what you're saying? Just just it's dipping your toe in the every bad. here just and there, little, yeah. little, little, little tiny bit, <laughs> little, little, bit. Little, just, little baby bits. That's it. Just a little. Just a little. Now uh, I'm confused about this next one because it says from Cosmo: daily challenges are still a thing. They won't appear until you've reached 900, and they didn't want you to accidentally complete them and miss out on powerful rewards while still under the soft cap. Now I watched a, I think it was a Houndish video, and he said that he was unaware of any daily challenges have you guys seen anything kind of daily isn't that on... like what's on io you get the the daily heroic adventure and it's a challenge kind of thing i thought it should have been but those rotate they did last season rotate every three or four days didn't they i guess i don't know i only ever did it the one time just to well, there's, the, the there's a bunch of people planet. yeah so so this is cosmo replying to someone on, on twitter saying you know why'd you get rid of daily challenges they're nice and easy i can knock them off you know i can only play so much and they're a good way to get powerful gear and the next like eight responses are you know i'm at i'm at 965 i'm at you know well above 900 and i haven't seen them either so maybe it's a bug maybe it's they're not actually showing up yeah i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure which daily challenges because yeah there was stuff before honestly I turn on Destiny and there's so many little things blinking at me to go do. I don't keep track of yeah. what's daily, what's weekly, what's every four days. So, and, and, and can one of you guys answer this for me? <clears throat> you probably can't, but um, Night Team, you know how whenever you completed like your Redrix broads, or not your Redrix, your, your freaking Randy's throwing knife and all that other stuff, and there was a green arrow on the tower telling you, hey, go back to the tower and you know talk to this guy? Well, it was a green arrow, something I had never seen until the update. Well, now I have a green arrow on the Leviathan raid, and I can't figure out for the life of me why the hell I have a green arrow on that thing. It's telling me I got to go there for something, but I don't know what. Oh, I know know what you need to do. You need to assemble a team. You need the Flash. You need Batman. You need Superman. (laughs) I'm not being serious. The green arrow. What the hell is with the green... Just gonna formulate the Justice League for hot. Yeah, yeah I that's what it is. See, <laughs> the see, green arrow. The one time I actually have a valid question, and and he and he makes a joke out of it. Just, it just, it's, I was genuinely curious there's, why the hell I have a green arrow. Maybe Tell there's a, I gotta go. Maybe I there, think there's, there's a quest a, step. Yeah, like, like do you have the uh, run the pre- run the prestige one to get your what's the shotgun called? The shotgun thing done. Do you have? Have you done that? Maybe that's it. I've got the know. shotgun, but whatever it, it's there and it's bugging me. Have you done the watcher's lenses? I'm not familiar with the name. And maybe it's not a green arrow. Maybe it's something else for those of us who are not colorblind. So we're not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, I guess that's true. I do have colorblind mode on, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it's the same icon. Like whenever you complete like a pinnacle weapon or whatever, mm-hmm. and you got to go to this location or talk to that person, it's a special icon 
that they have that wasn't green for me until the update and now there's one on the freaking leviathan raid and i don't know what the hell's causing it yeah it's, it's probably some quest up or some something you've picked up but yeah I, I don't know the only thing i can I think of it is that stupid shotgun quest that i still am never gonna do to get you know do the prestige run through it maybe that's it i know i did it on one of my characters because i have it i just don't know which character <laughs> yeah yeah so maybe you have it on, on another character and that's what it is yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't think there's so many icons in the game, and they change color different. I feel like they change some of the icons. This in Shadow Keep now, and I'm going, "What do you want?" Because like, like the, all the ones in the tower that are like, "Hey, I'm a new icon," but it just says, basically, just letting you know you have a weekly thing to do for them. It's not ready for you. Just go do it. So I don't yeah. know. And when you put your cursor over the raid, it doesn't it doesn't say anything. There is nothing. no like absolutely nothing. I, and when I go in the raid, there's no like there's no indicator mm-hmm. of what I need to go, what I need to do, or anything. Yeah, there's got to be something on something on that character, or you know, switch characters to see if it's still there. There's got to be something. I'm I'm gonna guess the shotgun because that's the only thing I can think of that would be in, in the Leviathan raid. Might be right. Or okay. or may maybe the Hawthorne bounties are maybe one of those. I, I don't know. No idea. But you gave me a direction to to start looking in, so I'll do that. Bumbling towards the truth. Bumbling towards the truth. That's all we can ever do, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Sorry about that little segue. Continue. Night Demon keeps telling me the Watcher's Lenses thing through text because apparently his voice is not working anymore. So <laughs> look up the Watcher's Lenses. It wants you to click, collect lenses from the Watchers to okay. go do things. I'll check that out. Mm. Watcher's Lenses. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Got it. And uh, Cosmo also goes on to say that a fix is being worked on for issues with the ordeal and powerful rewards. And on the rank 92 reward, he says, y'all let the team know the reward was not compelling. This is the first season... We've rolled out, you know, the rank awards. So please give us some feedback, what you like, what you don't like. It's nice. This is a great manual to see if you've maxed on, if you're maxed on something, you can wait until later to claim it or when you need it. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. So I don't know what the 92 Vex rank mind reward is. components. Yep. Ah, uh, Vex and Mind components. Yeah. I have so many of those sitting in my post pass right now because I'm out of room for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of the rewards are good. Honestly, I kind of forget that the rewards are there, so I'll go back and pick up like four or five levels back and go, "Ooh, look at all this new gear that I well, just got." You should you should know them because you're talking about how you don't like the roll on your auto rifle. Well, uh, rank seventy three and eighty three gives you a chance to re-roll your auto rifle in gambit and strikes. No, not strikes. Crucible. Well, well I mean, I have a auto. Ro- I have well, I have many auto rifle rolls. The I like. There's just, there's just one, you know. But again, I don't I don't need that one. I, I got a hazard of the cast to drop the other day that I'm falling back in love with so i have plenty of auto rifles i don't need to have you know a perfect roll of every auto rifle just enough auto rifles yeah and dmg would like to let everybody know that the old raid ornaments that they're not equipping at the moment on the new armor 2.0 variants uh, this is a bug that they will be looking into and that has been passed along as well very good yeah and then there were there were two things i had found from twitter this week one was the thing about bungie saying oh hey guys uh, those those maps you're seeing, yeah, we we intended that to happen. And also, I want to give a shout out to uh, I'm probably going to murder his name. Hat, Hatsubi plays games. Hatsube, he is H A T S U B E G on Twitter, and he tweeted the show earlier this week saying, "Love your podcast, best best accidental find ever." So I of course said, you know, hey, thanks for finding us. And I was curious, accidental. What do you mean accidental? So he said, hey, man, <laughs> I literally went to Spotify to listen to the Destiny Two soundtrack, and your podcast came up. I listened, and I was like. I like these guys. I'm gonna listen every day now. So I started from the beginning. I'm a fan. Nice. That's kind of how I found it too. So, Two Titans and a Hunter, better than the Destiny soundtrack. <laughs> so you know how I make jokes about how the only fan mail we ever get is from people that you know are giving me credit or whatever. That's just because they're just as jacked up as I am. If we actually had like a legit poll of who people would like the most, I guarantee it would most likely be British Dad. Well, now it's me. So. Yeah. No, it's you. Yeah, that's correct. But if if, if you're not on the poll, it's definitely going to be British Dad, because his oh, voice yeah, is so nice to fall asleep to. Because I'm not going to say who mentioned it, but somebody said that. <laughs> My own wife <laughs> says that. That's mm-hmm. she. <laughs> where where is as we talked about? A couple you were so boring ago. talking about destiny. It puts me to sleep. Is oh. what she said. Well, no, this person said they enjoyed your voice and it relaxes them to sleep. But 
you know, two different angles of the same view, yeah. I guess. Well, same well, outcome. Then, and then there's Respawn's voice that, that haunts Night Demon in his sleep because his son <laughs> listens to the podcast on the Alexa. So he wakes up to a screaming Night Demon at all hours well, of the right. day and we night. never said that on the podcast. That's right. Yeah, so his son does, in fact, listen to us 24-7. Was that not included? I thought for sure we included that. <laughs> that we, we, yeah, we included did. that. Did we? Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I thought did. we had. Was it I the week we that did. I wasn't here? I, I don't know. All the weeks run into what? last week. Really? How many weeks are you truly here? You were here when, last week. When, it was the week before when, you were here. Like when, I said, the week before. What are you talking about? Don't when, don't at me, bro. When you are here, you don't remember what we talked about. So how am I to remember when you're here or not? It's the same outcome either way. Listen, listen. listen. I've told you before. There's a medical reason why I don't remember things. Mm-hmm. Your wife only bopping you doesn't count. No, no, this is <laughs> this was That's not a medical reason. It's not in the medical dictionary. Bopping me long before I met my wife, but it's not the DSM four. Different story for a different day. Yeah, and um, I wanted to highlight another the thing that I was going to do, but I'm too lazy. So I'm glad somebody on Reddit has out gone and done it. So console loading loading times. Why you should buy an SSD? So mm-hmm. SSDs are really easy. Don't need even to open your Xbox. Go to your store. Buy a you know 120 or 256 gig SSD. What kind of store is it? Is this an Amazon store? Any store. Is any store will do. Store? Your grocery store any, will, any will store actually store except the ones in in Brexit land. Okay. Yeah. Really, I mean, I I am blessed to live near a micro center, so I can walk in there, which is like what a Best Buy should oh, be. Oh, do do you really? That's so cool. I was just introduced that uh, three months ago while I was on a job, dude. I was like, yeah, no, you know, my micro center. Anywhere. Yeah, micro center is beautiful. Micro Center for our West Coast friends, it's like if it was a fries, but like a quarter of the size of a fries. It, mm-hmm. It's about a, it, it's 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 about half the size of a Best Buy. If you took all of the non, all the appliances and CDs and crap out of a Best Buy, it's about that size. But yeah, but they have everything from yeah, they, they have what Amazon would have in a physical store, like it should be. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. Amazon really SSDs are coming down in price. You don't need a massive one. It doesn't have to be the fastest SSD in the world. Don't spend a ton of money on this. I walked in and got a 120 gig SSD and a like six dollar enclosure from Amazon, and I think I spent forty bucks, thirty or forty bucks on the whole thing. Mm. Plugs into my original Xbox and it speeds things up significantly. It's so, nice, so it's man. absolutely worth worth the the time to do it. So we'll we'll put the link in the show notes. But basically, he says, you know, he this guy did some did some time testing with an original Xbox and an Xbox One X. So you know, he has some videos in there as well. But you know, from from going from your dashboard to orbit. It's you know two minutes forty five seconds on the Xbox One, 152 on the Xbox One X, and fifty eight seconds. So basically, it halves your time or cut your time in a third with the SSD. From going from orbit to the courtyard in the tower, it's two and a half minutes on your Xbox One, two minutes on your Xbox One X, one minute fifteen on your One X with the SSD. And again, you know, again, uh, going from orbit to sanctuary on the moon, minute twenty one on Xbox, minute eleven on Xbox One X. 33 seconds on the one X with the SSD. So again, you get the idea. It basically cuts your time in half. And he did the testing, you know, with the one X. And again, I've got an SSD on my old original Xbox. And again, you're not going to have PC loading, you know, loading speed, but it easily halves the time getting to destiny. You know, not all games may benefit as much from this, but destiny absolutely benefits from not running the game off a spinning hard drive which is what every xbox has inside of it yes so it's and again my computer doesn't even sorry no no, go ahead no go ahead my computer uh i don't have an ssd in it at all Mm -hmm. it's just an old hard drive and it loads significantly faster than even uh i have an xbox s put put an ssd in there it will change your life That, that is honestly that is the single thing single biggest change you can make and honestly Kind of cheapest change you can make to speed up a computer. Put an SSD oh, yeah, in yeah. there. It will absolutely change your life. I just computer wise money. and console wise. Right. I was, probably gonna guys, put I was telling you guys the other day on Black Friday, this Lots past Black Friday, I found Samsung Evo on sale. 500 gig, what, $37, $47, something like that? 500 gig. That, even when they're not on sale. I think the 500 gig Evo is 50 or 60 bucks. Like they're not expensive at all. Yeah, but still, one or two of those, it's great. I got one on my Xbox and one on my laptop. It's bananas better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, the the, the all the Xboxes have USB three on them. 
get yourself a cheap, you know, again, you can find a five or six dollar enclosure on Amazon, or again, if you do have a micro center or a local store that sells them, get yourself a cheap enclosure. It'll all run SS, you know, all run USB three. It's worth the upgrade. Don't again, don't have to crack your Xbox open, plug it in externally. Even if you only only put Destiny on there, you know, again, if you got a trillion games, you don't need to put them all on the SSD. But again, if you got some games that are slow loading, throw them, you know, move over to the SSD, see if it see if it improves the gameplay for you. But Destiny absolutely will benefit from it. Mm-hmm. And then so you use there was it externally, an... huh? I didn't I didn't realize that until you just said it yet again because yep. you probably said it before. Yeah, yeah, no, mine, mine's internal. I cracked my bad boy open because my warranty is long expired. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I got no fear cracking it open. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Honestly, I, I cracked open the original because I had the hard drive die in it, but I didn't have the SSD at the time. Oh, there you so go. So I just put a, I just put another, you know, 4,500 RPM spinning drive in that. But I had someone need to open I need to buy a big SSD and just throw that inside. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pain in the butt reformatting drives internally for the Xbox. So it's much easier just to, you know, Put it externally. That's Go on with your life. Move on, gentlemen. Moving on. And I found there was another post on Reddit this week because I've been thinking someone needs to do a big, massive breakdown of all these Vex offensive weapons that they're just raining down upon us like candy from heaven. So somebody has. We'll link it in the show notes, including stats, time to kill, recommended perks. So, and I have a short version because the Massive Breakdowns podcast, which you can find at destinymassivebreakdowns.com. There's some good dudes over there who, again, do massive breakdowns and don't just tell you what the perks are, but they're like, here's why this is good. Here's what you should go for. They really dig into Destiny and give you the numbers and the stats and the information you want. We sort of gloss over because we're busy and we're not that dedicated, so deal with it. So basically, the, the scout rifle from from Vex Offensive, don't bother. Get your talents of the Eagle for Iron Banner instead. It's a better archetype. The hand cannon, go it, grab it, farm it. It's very similar to the trust from Gambit. Um, you can also you can get rolls that are very similar to the spear rations or the service revolver. It'll be there in your energy slot. The pulse rifle is a similar archetype to the last prediction from the crucible or the inaugural address from the Leviathan raid. Now those two are better weapons, but if you're just looking for something to farm quickly and easily, it's way quicker to jump into to the vex offensive and then grab a pulse rifle than doing the raid or hoping we go in from crucible. And Especially the SMG the pulse rifle. The pulse rifle is probably a god tier pulse rifle. In its oh yeah, line. oh yeah, yeah. The inaugural address is absolutely brutal, but no, 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 again, no, no. from the Vex offensive. Oh, 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 oh yeah. The uh, and again, I didn't put the actual names. The at whatever, whatever, at, whatever at it is, Warnive, it's the pulse rifle. It's yeah, yeah. And the SMG, it's decent in PVE. Don't bother for PVP. There are better ones. That's the short version. But if you if you like these archetypes, we'll put the link in the show notes to Reddit where they someone else does our absolutely in depth breakdown of everything and what roles and what tiers and what you should be hunting for. And now, additional show notes. Additional show notes, yes. Mm-hmm. Shall I put our, I was going to say about those Iron Banner things. What Moody Iron guts. Banner? Never mind. So, let's let's have a little discussion. Because I yeah. think we're probably all around the same kind of level. Okay. From around 950, heading towards 960. Without our artifact, of course. Yep. So, I was I was having a chat with you know our clan mates while playing Iron Banner this week, and um, I'm on that power grind from 950 to 960. And what really struck me was when I picked up those bounties from Iron Banner, turned them all in, I got three primary weapons to drop at 951 on one character. Right. From four bounties, all the same, and I was like. Uh, this doesn't seem fair. You know, I want to progress to 960. Surely, you know, one item in every slot would be helpful. And it wasn't kind of until I looked at other YouTubers and other podcasts that were saying, you literally have to be 951 in On every, every slot. every single piece, yep. Before you can then move up to 952. And there's no way that you'll get a 952 to drop in the meantime, or, you know, an exotic to drop at a higher level to help boost you up even further. And Correct. if you go away, I mean, I went away and kind of did a bit of math on it. You need 80 powerful drops with perfect RNG to get to 960. Ain't it a bitch? This season, there's only so, 10 weeks. So there's the, raid, the grind. Yeah, the raid offers only four powerful rewards per character per week. You get one yeah, but from that's the hundred raid. 
no, that's from doing the raid. The, you know, you can't get those powerful rewards from doing Leviathan. You can only do it, do it from the Garden of Salvation. Really? You get you get higher tier armor stats rolls ah, from doing you got doing it. the uh, older raids, but you can't get the powerful rewards from the other raids. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get one hundred k nightfall that you can do totaling five a week so that's 50 drops that you can get in a week oh sorry not in a week you get 50 drops in total so over the 10 weeks i was gonna say if you're getting 50 powerful drops a week what game are you playing yeah (laughs) so so basically in total you can get 50 power drops four times oh no 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 right so you need 80 on one character to get to 960 and you've got 50 at the moment and then you've got iron banner which offers i think it's six i'm not 100 percent sure because you can pick up four but then two seem to kind of be glitching in and out of that you can pick them up additionally or not additionally for i mean me, for some of the characters three, three for some of the characters for, for some of my characters it's like i can pick up i picked up two automatically mm-hmm. when i'd already turned in the others and and then now i can't pick up anything else so it's six but let's stick with the four that you can get so say that you've got the three Iron Banners per season, four drops per character in that season. That's an additional 12 chances that you have. So it brings up our running total to 64. We need an, an, an additional 18 Pinnacle Rewards to get to 960 on one character. And what really messes people up is that Raid does not have a powerful weapon in its loot pool. So you can't progress if you've been doing the raid for the last couple of weeks before the iron banner, unless you've been lucky enough to get one in the hundred K nightfall or an iron banner drop. Sounds a lot like a Rick Kakis video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have to, like we were saying, you have to get everything to nine fifty one to progress to nine fifty two, And you have to have the most perfect RNG and get every drop in line before you can progress to the next level, which is basically impossible in this game. And um, with the current allowance of, pinnacle drops that we get i mean we may get more from higher tier of nightmare hunts the dungeon the vex offensive final assault uh raid challenges that are coming and anything else that they kind of drop in over the next couple of weeks but again you're going to need perfect rng and what i realized when working all this out and, and talking to us like the other guys in the clan is i mean i hit 950 pretty early on with my character but i've enjoyed that grind to get to 950 I've enjoyed doing my milestones, even though they're not necessary anymore for me. Because as when you hit 950, everything drops at 950. So that's blues in the world, blues in crucible, strikes and gambit. You've got legendary awards at the end of the matches that drop, turning in tokens at certain vendors at certain times because they rotate round. Will drop at 950. Prime engrams won't go any higher than 950. And exotics also cap out at 950 when they drop, which. I don't understand because in Destiny 1, those were the kind of things that you were looking for to kind of help either progress your light or powerful. Yeah, yeah, to drop powerful. Uh, and I would have thought that the exotics would help you push up plus one or plus two light yeah. once you've hit 950, but they don't. But it should be. It would yeah. Be another per- way to get the average player, uh, you know, a little pick me up and the hardcore players that extra plus that they need for their ultimate goal of world domination at 960. Um, you didn't get to the worst part yet, though. <laughs> What's the worst part? All right. So in the Rick Kakis video that I watched, that's saying everything they're saying verbatim. Okay. The worst part is um, whenever you get to those higher powerful drops, right? Let's say you're 960 just gear, right? And you go inside a PvP and you're fighting someone that is only a few light levels below you. Yeah. That's the difference between like two shotting and three shotting somebody. Okay. Yeah. So like the damage curve is steeper when you start to get those uh above nine fifty drops. Oh yeah, I think I watched this, but this was after I was I kind of had my chat with the guys in the clan and, and decided yeah. that nine fifty to nine sixty isn't something that even the hardcore players should be really going for mm-hmm. because everything in my vault is now 950 or the majority of it is now 950 because i've been getting so many different drops so i started off with all the the tier of stuff that i really like playing with uh, and all the gear that i like wearing 
And now I'm kind of going through and just doing the second kind of tier and maybe sometimes the third tier so that I can pick anything in that vault and just go into Crucible or Strikes and have some fun with the loadouts. So I'm kind of, I'm now at the point of, I'm rather focusing on trying to get the higher tier of roles that you can get on the armor than I am the light progression because I can progress my artifact further and faster than I can in trying to do RNG trials round and round the map. You know, if 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 I go and do the raid, I've got those four chances and I've got that one chance from doing the nightfall. But is it worth is it worth banging my head against the wall an hour trying to do a nightfall or an hour trying to do a raid? Whereas I can pick up multiple bounties on one character and go into one activity. I was I was saying to the guys, I can pick up the three or four uh, bounties from Banshee. I can pick up the strikes from Zavala. I can also pick up Vex ones from Ikora. I can pick up a couple from the Drifter. And I could go into a Nightfall, a locked Nightfall at 820, and have a curated loadout of what weapons I need to use based on the bounties that I need. Go in, get the kills, come out, repeat as, and get all those bounties done. 20 minutes? But that's leveled up my artifact exponentially in XP quicker than i can go and see if i can get a powerful drop and it's more fun because if i'm picking up all the bounties and i'm I'm grabbing a team going into iron banner picking up all my crucible ones picking up iron banner ones picking up an extra couple of gambit ones and anything else kind of planet wise as well you can also pick up when you're doing uh strikes and that and that all that xp and playing the game will give you xp and killing enemies will give you xp everything's kind of progressing the artifact quicker and it seems to be a lot funner to do it that way. I know it's a, an artificial light grind, but there doesn't seem to be, it, it seems like everybody's going to be at that forever 29, you know, 950 realms at the moment, because there doesn't seem to be enough kind of pushing people to that 960. I mean, yeah, the, the, the things that they're, they're going to do like the, the strikes, uh, the, the nightfalls, and the raids are going to be really high tier drops, but is it worth you doing that? Is Probably it just not. Not more oh. more fun to just play the game? Yeah, in PvP it matters because, like I said, the 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 things above nine fifty for your armor apparently have a steeper damage fall off. And this is again Rick, Rick Hackus. I didn't come up with these numbers. This is just what I'm being no. told, right? Um, but as far as getting the gear, just from the Iron Banner, I got. I got a 951 in each one of my weapon slots and a 951 helmet. So I'm already like four four pieces deep just from the Iron Banner, right? Yeah, but then you've got to rely on RNG to help get you your other four pieces at higher light. That That's true. Um, Whereas with your artifact, I'm currently at 965 and I'm halfway through the fifth. So I'm nearly at 966, and which is ridiculous. It you is. know, so... <laughs> I could you, I could spend time enjoying the game, right? And, to, to yeah, that because yeah. that that's the idea is that you progress the XP on that quicker, you know. And every couple of I think it was three and eight, wasn't it? Parody that that will drop a an Eververse engram for you, so you can get extra stuff from going over level a hundred. I think I'm at one hundred and twenty or something on my season pass. Dag and gone, dude. But it's just, it's down to what the bounties. Pure determination. Right, it's, it's down to the bounties. It's just Shoot. grab the bounties for where you, what activities you know you're going to do, and go in and just have fun. That's all I've been doing this week is Iron Banner this week. I mean, my XP has slowed down because I haven't been kind of grabbing all the PVE ones. And whoa, jumping whoa, whoa, in. wait, 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 wait. So you're saying, let me this right. You're saying you're playing a game for fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's not ah. a thing. and he's, i've got he's just messing with you parody it's not a thing <laughs> and i've i've got to a really good light level <laughs> where that with my artifact it's not going to hinder me going into a 980 a nightfall or right. going into a raid i'm i'm at that level you know i don't i don't see myself getting to 960 it, I mean, I think I could, but it would take a lot of time and effort and a lot of RNG for me to even get there at the end of the season because you're, like I was saying, you've got like, you need, what was it? 
um, you've got 64 drops. If you can get those 64 drops to work in sync with your characters. And like I pointed out originally, I, I got like four drops as pr of primaries or three drops of primaries on my first character. And I did for the kind of the second one, I've, I've got like five primary weapons at 951. I've got like the odd helmet and gauntlets and um, butt cape for my Titan. But again, I've, I've got one heavy, I think you're kind of looking to RNG and I don't think that, that that's something that they should have implemented into the game as much, unless there was a kind of reason for it. At least not just severely anyway. Yeah. I mean, I understand that they've got more things coming later on in the game that could probably get everybody to, or those hard, hardcore players to get into 960 by the end of the season, but you need 18 more pinnacle rewards in this season to kind of get you up that high. I mean, yeah. what what do you reckon, Dandy and Parody? What do you think about this? This has been. I think I'm not known. getting to uh, max late this season, <laughs> right? But I do think... you care this season? Yeah, do you care? Oh no, no, not really. I've never raid. really cared. We've already missed a week of a, a week of raid. You know, I, I think season. I'm I'm going to go back to Night Demon's conversation we had earlier this week of what's the point. What's the point of getting your light to that high other than bragging rights and making the game a little easier? The PvP aspect. If you're like a hardcore PvP or it's gonna no, but that's what you. I'm saying. If you if you an iron banner boost if you yeah. boost your artifact, I mean I didn't see I saw one other person at nine sixty four on the opposite team. It didn't matter to me at that point. You know, I'm nine sixty five. Yes, there were lower people. But yeah, it, it, I don't it think it matters. Of, it, I don't think it matters. And in Iron Banner, it's always just fun anyway. Right, yeah, I think it's... I mean, it, it matters in Iron Banner. It, ma it matters if you're doing the you know top-tier Nightmare nightmare Hunts or the 980 Nightfalls, but beyond that, I uh, once you hit 950, I don't think it's going to matter I, a whole lot. And I, I know a lot probably... of folks, I'm sure, aren't even that high, so... Yeah, you're you're at the end of the content. You're you know, and end of the light grind. You know, you're stuck at the you know forever twenty nine level. You'll be there until the next season. Then you'll be, if they up the light again, then you'll be on that chase. You'll never quite be exactly at the top, top, tippity top tier of light. But also, I don't think it matters that much at all. The only time I, mean, I ever care about my light is when Iron Banner's around, and as long as I'm within fifty levels of max light, I don't see a difference. Hmm. So, and you know, they say level advantage is enabled, right? But in some of those screenshots I sent you yesterday, you'll see Killer Alex 100 on there with like 21 kills or 14 kills or whatever. That's my son. And he started playing Iron Banner at 750 and he yeah. was killing people. So I'm just like, uh, I thought that there was like going to be this huge disparity over it or whatever, you know? And, and my son is still, you know, killing quite a number of people. And I don't know, I don't know exactly if he was just last shotting people. I'm not sure. But the fact that he's even doing damage when he's potentially 200 light level under most of the other people we're playing with, I think says a lot. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. When I started Iron Banner, when it came out earlier this week, I was only like 750, 780. And I definitely noticed a difference because now I'm 900 and I go in now and we were playing earlier today and I had like 14 kills that one match just running around like and before I would only get maybe two or three because I could only kill people if they were very low or I just got lucky and had my super, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I guess there is definitely a power disadvantage, but I don't know if it's as strong as they make it out to be. Yeah, I mean, if it, let's let's put it uh, like this, it's been like two and a half weeks since Shadow Keepers dropped, mm -hmm. and with the potential drops that you could have got, so you could have got fifteen drops in the last two and a half weeks, you mm -hmm. could, without the artifact, you could get your guardian to nine sixty two, maybe, and then maybe nine sixty three with a uh, good RNG on the um, Iron Banner as well. And then let's uh, let's be honest. Nobody's got like a an artifact with 20, 20 power at the moment. Just average players. You're looking at maybe ten, roughly. Uh, they've just kind of unlocked it. So nobody's going to be 
at 967, 969, 970 at the moment, which is why I think that that you know that hard. I can't help. Is, it. I can't is, help but notice you keep saying at the moment, at the moment, at the moment, at the moment. You know, yeah, right now you're right. Not a lot of people are going to be there at the moment. What about next week? The week after that, or the week after that? Well, they you know? they'll they'll get at least one light level higher each week. Let's just, if you if you manage to do the eighty drops and say there were eighty drops in in total and you got perfect RNG mm -hmm. for the next, you know, I think it's eight more weeks we've got or seven and a half more weeks that we've got. Somebody could potentially get to nine sixty without the artifact two weeks before the end of the season. Sure. But then they've also got their artifact on top of that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. There's no point at that point for you to grind and really put it, put it to do those pinnacle things to get those drops to bang your head against the wall for RNG. Just do those do those pinnacle things to enjoy the game. I hear that. The only thing that I I can't say is because you're saying it might not matter. What if? And this is a big what if, and I know. But what if the armor light level is the base and uh, maybe the artifact is like a multiplicative of it or something or an additive? And as you get above 950 light, like 951, 952, 960, etc., that light level begins to have more of an impact on like a curved scale than not having it. Well, it shouldn't have because they haven't detailed it like that. They've okay. detailed that the artifact adds to your light. It doesn't say that it adds, a, you know, a, a watered down version of your light. It just adds to your light and your power right. and your, your the damage that you can take. So, yeah, I mean, I think my whole thing was this is that I, getting those multiple drops of that one weapon kind of really highlighted to me the fact that you don't need to get to 960 it's not not something that's achievable for the average player and i would i would cast myself as an average player because yes i might play a, a few more hours than like my friend does a few more, but yeah. but at the end of the day i'm not going to be 960 and i don't think anyone in the clan is going to be 960 to be honest yeah, I, wow. just, I, I don't think just, there's a point just, to wow. it. I mean, I, just, I mean, it, it, it's really th there comes a point where you're you're grinding just for either the OCD ness of getting the absolute max level you can have, but really, like in as far as in the game goes, it's like is is there a point? You know, there comes yeah. a point where you're, you're grinding for the sake of the grind, not because it's going to give you any kind of actual advantage, advantage, or even yeah, I mean, even not advantage, but just. I mean, there's nothing in the game you you have to be that high to go do. It's not like there's a cap of, you know, you have to be 960 or you can't even X. You can't even step foot in here. It's like, you can do it. It'll be harder. Yeah, sure. It'll be easier for you're 960, 980, 10,000, whatever. But there's nothing preventing you from doing a lot of that stuff. And yeah, it, it's a grind. I, I, I don't see the point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just, so I'm just looking at the clan right now. So, Night Demons is 965, ML Payday is at 963, Respawn's at 962, Get'll be 961, Blue Screen's at 961, and then there's a whole bunch of folks, you know, 940, 950 and below. Like, again, it's like once you're up there, well, what's the point? You know, what's, what's the motivation to get that high? I mean, other than just playing the game and progressing because progressing you enjoy it, but I don't know. I mean, I'm sitting. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting at you know 949 right now. I could probably be a little bit higher if I had. I could probably hit 950 something. I'm at level 50 on my season pass. <laughs> I'm just something. I'm just. You know, I'm. I'm just halfway through it. Yeah, I've. I've. I've been running around playing with the one. The weapons I want to have. Uh, I can get to. That, okay, that doesn't make any sense at all. I'm at 949, and then Dim tells me I could get to 945.7. So. Dim's Dim's having some issues, so all right, Dim. We'll we'll, we'll talk about this later. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, I'm sitting about 950 or so. I've I put some things in the vault too. They're probably a bit higher. Because again, I mean, I'm at 950 or you know, 949. I just uh, everything I'm you know, I'm not jumping to the to the nightfall hunts. I haven't tried one of the 980 nightfalls. 
that's why uh, unless there's some reward that i could go get you know if there was something there <laughs> some care at the end of that stick but why i mean yeah uh, yeah I, I mean if, there, if there's some care at the end of that stick sure i'd go do it but if it's just oh you, you, you'll get a random you'll open the chest and get some blue stuff popping out of it oh but it'll be 950 blue stuff who cares I, I don't care give me a stick to chase otherwise i'm just gonna go jump into my 90th gambit game and run around and have fun with people but that's about the exotics the what? No, and then my team is trying to tell me how I'm wrong. If his, <laughs> if his internet connection will stop playing up on him, you're wrong, and this is why. <laughs> here, Can you hear me now? We'll yeah. we'll move the Discord <laughs> to the UK when you want to speak, and then back to the US when we're speaking. We'll okay. just we'll just move it around. No, but what I was saying was that that's where I could see where the exotics should have come in with the plus one or maybe the plus two to fill in those gaps. Because say, for instance, you had the bad rng for weeks and weeks and weeks and you just needed that one item to drop but you got a plus two in something you've already got that would then tip you over that scale see that's the bad thing about this is that you you have to rely on that rng that's the only thing that's is, that's... is that even the thing that you can do or uh, you just made kind of an assumption about you know you getting an item that's plus two has that no been... you can't get no you can't get a plus two oh, what i'm no. saying is Sorry, I'm with the think, exotics think it, if it, if they had gone that route ah uh, okay i mean was whereas all the other seasons there's been a lot of people that have got to the max like i know they've got to there really quickly and this season was meant to be built as a season where you're meant to be slowly progressing to the max light but when you've got situations like this that are happening, you you can, as a player, I'm looking at it going, why? Parody's looking at it going, why? If I get to 950 and I just keep going on my artifact, why do I need to get to that? <laughs> why do I need to do that extra hoop? You know, it's, I just want to play the game and enjoy the game. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to progress the artifact and I'm just going to have fun. It's fair, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that said, I really, I really do appreciate if they put the season fa- they, they put the season pass in they put the artifact in i'm really enjoying both of those i'm enjoying you know having the artifact where i have to make some choices on what extra you know what extra mods do i want to add i'm i'm enjoying the anti barrier and the overload perks i'm enjoying that yeah even even when again i'm only halfway through the the season pass stuff mm-hmm. but even with demo that's at 100 you're still getting stuff from it there's still a reason to sort of keep playing the game it's not sort of like you're done and there's nothing else there I really like the season pass and I hope they, you know, they continue to do this. I like this style of it. Of here's, here's what, you, you know, I like how they've laid it out. Here's what you can do. Play the game. Here's what your rewards are going to be. Yeah. There's some RNG to it. Some of them are engrams, whatever, but there's a bunch of, okay. You know, this level, you get a gun, this level, you get an armor piece, this level, you get this. I like having reward that I can work on and grind to and know what I'm going to have. In addition to just you get something and here's something else. Oh, and here's a prime engram, which will be something. So I, I'm really enjoying that split of it. Okay. I think again, I mean, I think they're moving in the right direction. A lot of the changes they're making are really good, and I've I've really enjoyed it. I still feel like there's way too much to do in this game, but <laughs> is that a bad thing for you? Uh, it kind of is because I've I've had I've had days where I'll get on and play four or five hours, and then I'll have two or three days in a row where I don't even turn the Xbox on. And coming, yeah. I'm feeling that overwhelm of coming back. There's just too much stuff to do. It's like, oh, go go knock out this weekly thing. Go play enough rounds of this to do that. I jumped into Reckoning the other day because I'm still working on the new armor sets. Okay. Which, oh, and Reckoning, Reckoning is so easy right now. Reckoning is, is in such a good spot right now without the negative modifiers and with the increased power. It's in such a good spot. It feels it feels a lot like Menagerie now. You jump in if you have a team that's halfway decent, just halfway with half a brain in their heads. If they have a pulse. You yeah, exactly you can you can basically get through this. I mean, we were capturing zones where I feel like it was only three of us standing in the zone on the bridge half the time because we were going to grab someone who had gotten knocked off or just go and even just going out with a roaming super and clearing ads and generating orbs and coming back. Uh-huh. Reckoning is in a really good spot, and and I, I'm really curious if they're you know like they they talked about a couple weeks back taking one of the two gambits out of the game. I'm curious if that's on the on the back you know if that's going to happen or so. I mean, did they say they were going to remove? I'm having a hard time. Well, I thought they said they were. Well, going I mean, to they they basically, they basically said the way forward. One. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I think the way they were basically like the way forward is like we have two versions of basically the same game type. The way they were talking is I, one of them is going away. I don't think they're going to continue to develop two basically identical versions of the same game type. 
So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they said as much, but that's what I got from it is, is either Gambit or Gambit Prime is not going to go forward at some point. All right. But it's going to be around for the next year at least. Right. Yeah, it's going to be around for a while. I'm just happy that like once the Vex, you know, once the, the Vex leave us the season and you know, maybe the Vex, you know, we lose the Vex offensive or lose, you know, lose whatever things goes goes with that thing i'm glad that that's at least one less thing in the game to go to <laughs> and then there'll be something new to go do so it's not just adding and yeah. adding and adding every week whatever thing goes with that thing huh mm-hmm. whatever, so, our next, whatever our next redacted season is going to be uh, yeah should we move on to tips tricks builds and guides let's uh, see how far might see as well we've already kind of been doing that inadvertently Let's see yeah. how far my team can get through these since I don't watch videos. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 write show, I write show notes, badly edit video, and uh, try to stutter my way through notes. So, yeah, have at it, Robot might, Dad. I, I did watch a lot of these, hope. so I might be able to pick up where he fails. Yeah, I've got to hope that it stays green all throughout this. Mm, so, for a lot. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm asking for a lot. So, if I just keep speaking, hopefully it stays on green. So I Blue Air has an infinite chaos reach and super energy warlock build. So using the Geomag stabilizers and their exotic perk close, in, close enough, which extends the chaos reach and sprinting can add super energy. And he pairs this with the bad juju exotic pulse rifle, which can be obtained in season of opulence in the tribute hall. Uh, its exotic perk is string of curses where kills refill the magazine, increase the damage and grant super energy. And he goes through the armor and what mods he puts on his gear to help with the build. And then he takes you into a nightfall to show you the results. Then we have Cheese Forever, who's got a grenade charge for every two kills build. And he goes over a high and low budget version for the Warlock. So this mm-hmm. includes kind of like an armor 1.0 hybrid and maybe 2.0 top tier kind of build where you've unlocked everything on your artifact for the warlock so using bottom tree void walker to take advantage of devour in insatiable so on killing an enemy while devour is active it extends its duration you regenerate your grenade plus killing an enemy while devour active fully restores the player's health if you have a demolition demolitionist weapon like the new vex offensive optative hand cannon which is a void and can roll with demolished demolitionist you can consume your grenade to fully reload your weapon as well he says that you can either use verity's brow or the nezarek sin exotic helmets and the nezarek sins per exotic perk is the abyssal extract void kills increase ability regeneration and the verity's exotic perk is fourth magic energy weapon kills recharge grenades faster so he goes over the mods that you'll need to unlock in your artifact as well to help with the build then we have the Enkooch Broken Hunter build. So this is one for you definitely to look at, Respawn. So using a primary bow with clip quick access sling mod on it and the new exotic hand cannon, Ariana's Vow, for this combo. It basically goes over that with quick access sling on a bow, once you fire the weapon with a quick access sling, it says that you can swap to another weapon extremely fast when there's no ammo in the weapon which is why he uses a bow and he shows you that you can take one shot with the bow and flick literally flick the arianas and kill somebody in like two shots ridiculously fast it's unbelievably fast how it is how it can happen so Um, the hang you you were breaking Mm. up a little bit so you're saying get a bow with quick access sling fire off the arrow and immediately swap to ariana's vow and it's still going to be on target yes yeah, uh-huh. the hand ca- the hand cannon's exotic perk is death at first glance. So you get right. bonus damage when aiming down sights on the opening shot of an attack, and the bonus is preserved if the shot is precision damage. So you don't even need to get precision damage because you get uh, uh, the extra damage. Plus, if yeah. you've hit with the bow, so you'll get the extra damage with the Ariana's vow because the exactly. bow hangs on to the. Yes. So. Oh, that does sound nice, especially since now it... I have to do solar freaking kills. He also uses the exotic gauntlets, the Oath Keepers, which hold any bow charge indefinitely. And he uses Top Tree Night Stalker for invisibility. So go and watch the video because he literally is running around invisible in the Crucible, takes a bow shot, flicks Arianas and gets them almost immediately. It's unbelievable. That does sound pretty awesome. It is absolutely nuts. Then we have Mtash's Titan build that's going to get you banned. Now he starts off the video. (laughs) Literally. He, he literally starts off the video with five minutes of gameplay with really crazy music of like 
kind of music before he goes into the build. So it's about five minutes in before he actually starts speaking about it. And he says that he's been reported 15 times over the last week for this build. He uses the bottom tree striker with the frontal assault melee, which reloads your weapon, increases both weapon stability and damage. And he goes over why you don't need the one-eyed mask for this, but you can use it at the moment until it kind of goes away. And he goes over alternative exotics that you can be used for this. And in this build, he has the new ritual crucible weapon, Randy's throwing knife, and the recluse submachine gun with the new Thundercore mod that is the cherry on the top for the pairing of this melee damage bonus. Go and watch it because, again, it's something, as long as you've unlocked that Thundercore, you can go and do very, very easily. And I think he points out Syntheseps, um, the Worm God Caress. Liar's Handshake. No, that's that's not for time, is it? No, but it sounds like you can do something similar with the Hunter. Well, no, it's for the Titan build. But okay. maybe, maybe you could figure that out for me. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it it's absolutely insane. And even with the nerfs that are going to happen, because he kind of covers that, this build is still going to be very, very strong in the Crucible. Great. Okay, so, yes. So it doesn't matter if you nerf our one-eyed mask and our super. We can still <clears throat> punch our way through things. And I'm okay with that. You know, if you can come up with a build that doesn't completely rely on one freaking overpowered exotic, because... You know, the one-eyed mask helps you in every situation. That's uh, that that what he's talking about sounds, you know, specific to melees. Yes. Yeah. So, also with this, Mtash this week has put three guides together of max resilience, max mobility, and max recovery, and what you kind of need to build out for these um, different stats on your armor rolls. And he goes over the pluses and minuses for each. I'm telling you now, though. Just watch the recovery one because that's probably the best one. And that's what he's been running with is max recovery. 100% max recovery in all his Crucible games. Once he found out that recovery yep. was the best, best I, one I to watched have. that video and I, I swapped from mm. resilience because I had 10 resilience and now I have 8 recovery. And yeah. there's a huge <laughs> difference. Yeah. Stats don't lie. Stats do not lie. Also, come on, go back to green. Please go back to green. Orange. Okay, we're on orange. Fallout Plate has a broken armor set. So I think this is what you were telling me earlier in the week, Respawn, mm -hmm. with people trying to spec out an armor set to have damage resistance. Yep. Turns out to be the original Solstice, well, not original, but it turns out to be the Solstice of Army set that we got prior to Shadow Keep. If you've kept it, then apparently it does, it's got a lot more damage resistance to, um, he, in the video, Fallout basically shows you he's, he's sniping his girlfriend or his fiance in the video, and he shows you that she can literally tank a headshot with a sniper, a high impact sniper. What? And one without, one without, yeah. I thought that those were guaranteed kills, though. Nope, not with this armor set. What? So if, that is overpowered. Like, honestly. If, if you've got this armor set, it's worth watching the video to see if you can, you know, at least benefit from having it. Next, yep. we have Sweaticles Fast XP Farm Method. So you can get 8,000 to 10,000 per minute. And I think this is basically this is basically what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is with grabbing all the bounties and things. But Sweaticles has a video on it for um, maximizing or getting the best out of your time with um, when you're playing. Ninja Pups has a Nightfill the Ordeal Guide, and he goes over how to get increased exotics that drops from the new nightfall and what you should be doing and something that you were asking me about with the lunar's howl is it any good at the moment yeah drewski the at the beginning of the week found out with the magnificent hell perk on the not forgotten which is the pinnacle weapon from a couple of seasons back and the lunar's howl the magnificent hell perk is not affected by the damage drop off so much like we highlighted a couple of weeks ago with a lot of these weapons that have got explosive rounds in them, this seems to benefit from that as well. So it's doing really good damage if you're using those weapons in Crucible. So but they has don't a... have explosive rounds, right? You get you well, the get, magnificent you get the howl, is... off, but you also don't have the explosive. Okay, so sorry. So um, <laughs> you 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 get the the benefit of not having the damage fall off without having to have explosive rounds on the weapon. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, 
the the weapon that me and respawn have both got this week and it definitely couldn't highly recommend it i think we recommended it last week highly oh, recommend yeah. you go and get this weapon deer side has put a guide of the randy's throwing knife of a review of it and it goes over the damage numbers and the stats and why you need to get this weapon and uh, again we couldn't tell you more highly of a weapon to get if you if you are playing crucible try and get this weapon it's it is absolutely amazing and after playing with the mitre multi-tool to get it um i got so used to just having that that control and that map awareness that as a hunter now that i just have the randy's throwing knife i put on a knucklehead radar and i'm getting anywhere between 20 and 45 kills a game with this combo it is destructively dirty <laughs> it's not crucible and if you just swap the perks uh the the crucible perks for the pve perks it's still a really really good scout rifle for pve Blah. also a tip for if you are going to try and get this weapon it, when I'm, when iron banner does come up you the rewards that you get or the the um you one of the parts is that you need to have medals for it's, it's so is it 14, 1,400 medals of something you need for one something of the points? Yep. Something ridiculous. But in doing Iron Banner matches, Paladin shout those reward medals like there's no tomorrow. So even if your team are getting like wolf pack medals and, and all these different things, that will help really, really fast build up that specific point. So even if you don't want to kind of do it in the next couple of weeks, maybe go off and do your glory in your solo playlist, do that part, get a couple of scout rifle kills in other parts and then wait for iron banner to come and um, complete the medals in there and also turning in tokens for iron banner once you've completed the quest steps on that character can you more award you enhanced mods for gear so you're looking at enhanced sniper enhanced hand cannon loaders enhanced flinch anything that's enhanced iron banner once you're turning in tokens will drop those mods for you and that's it parody Whew. i think i've probably wasted all the bandwidth <laughs> you'll be red from this point forward <laughs> dandy would you like to um clan spotlight your clan no <laughs> <laughs> don't, Fair go, enough. don't go join his clan the pc uh, people don't want geez. you they're not interested you're a scrub not just that but apparently his clan doesn't believe that the des the two titans and a hunter podcast even exists so you know forget those guys this doesn't exist. This is all figments of our imagination. Well, I like having a good imagination. Me telling them that it exists. It makes my lonely nights go by that much easier. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Your Titans have been Parody and Night Demon. Your Hunters are no respawn, No one responds in real life and the Dandy Snail. You can email the show at twotitansandhunterhotmail.com. You can leave us more lovely feedback at two Titans underscore hunter on Twitter. Find the show on Facebook or and Instagram. You could join the Frozen Clan at join.frozen.party. That's Frozen with a zero. If you like sandwiches, come on and hang out with us. You could go join a PC clan, but they don't want you, so go find a clan that's better for you, like the Guardian Hub. Find your favorite Guardians on Xbox Live, sometimes PC. Watch the show on YouTube, listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and wherever fine podcasts are sold. I leave you in the wilds watching for the Cyclops to race around the corner and end your, your brief sweet life, you dear hunters. <laughs> Say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Yeah, baby. Dandy, you got to say goodbye. Dandy, you, no. Dandy, you have to say goodbye. You're here. You have to say goodbye. Say Dandy's goodbye, Dandy. All, he, he, Dandy. He's a, he, Dandy's Dandy. Gone, Dandy. Dandy's a robot. Goodbye. Dandy. Dandy, say goodbye, Dandy. Dandy. It's a robot. No. And now I fix that. <laughs>